Have you ever looked at my videos and thought to yourself, whoa, I'd really love this guy to talk about every each one of the movies he owned individually for five and a half hours? First of all, why? And if yes, this is the video for you, because I will go through in detail every each one of these. Which I definitely did in one sitting and not over multiple days to save my own sanity. But I didn't want to save your sanity because this is an entire video. So grab yourself something to drink, a ice cold Coca-Cola. Grab yourself something to eat, some greasy popcorn and get ready for me talking a lot. This is my entire movie collection. So I apologize in advance for the shaky videography. I'm also using my phone and I'm standing on a stepladder and I haven't really talked about it in the past, but I am definitely afraid of heights and just being on the stepladder scares me to death. So we're starting off with um, my favorite director probably ever, Lucio Fulci. And uh, this, these are all the movies that I own from the master himself. And let's start off with a double feature of Black Cat, you know, based on Edgar Allan Poe. And this is a double feature with uh, Fulci's Black Cat and Sergio Martino. Your vice is a locked room and only I have the key. And Martino is also another of my favorite directors. We'll talk later on about him. Then we have my little Beyond collection. We have the Arrow release, the old, you know, DVD, white DVD case, uh, white Blu-ray case with multiple um, posters. I decided to go with this one because I don't have any other release with this poster. Then we have this French DVD uh, by Neo Publishing, L'Odela, which is also a pretty cool cover, The Dead Kid. It's pretty cool and then we have the ultimate you know the the release that you need to own if you love the beyond and that is of course uh, the grindhouse releasing one then speaking of grindhouse releasing we have cat in the brain not my favorite this is kind of like a best of lucio fulci which is a strange concept then this one is probably one of Fulci's most underrated film. This is Beatrice Cenci. It's based on an Italian play. It's masterfully done. It, uh, it's a good movie that criticizes the hypocrisy of the church in 1969 Italy. So this was way ahead of its time. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing release by 88 Films. And it's an amazing movie. And uh, stars Adrienne Larussa. And she is... A beautiful. Then we have a lizard in a woman's skin, a another underrated um, giallo. I think like Elvis the alien, Elvis the alien made a review about this one, which was fucking weird, a weird concept. Or he made reference to it. I don't know. I just remember seeing in, in one of his videos when I used to watch him, and I was slightly confused that somebody, you know. Um, like that would know this film and uh, i read alex jones there for a while i'm like oh i guess this is one of alex's <laughs> favorite movie speaking of favorite movies you know when you're a full chief fan you're always debating what was his best film you know and this one is definitely up there for me uh this is one of his 70s giallo this is also a film that is uh, fairly critical of the catholic church uh, and it's, again, very ballsy for the time, and it's amazing. We have The Psychic, not my favorite of his giallo, but a pretty entertaining one. Then we have, of course, a Zombies Flesh, Zombie Flesh Eater, or Zombies, or Zombie 2. Do I really need to tell you why this movie rules? Same thing for the, you know, House by the Cemetery, come on, you guys know it's a great movie. Gates of Hell. The Devil's Honey is uh, one of his later 80s film, uh, and uh, it, 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 it fucks. It's incredible. Demonia, I just bought it. I haven't seen it yet. It's like a non-supernatural film from Fulci. Then we have his westerns. Well, the two I have, at least. The Brute and the Beast. 
and Four of the Apocalypse, which are two amazing spaghetti westerns. I love those two movies. Then we have Contraband, is Politsecki film, and it's uh, just as amazing, it's just as gory, and I think the lenticular cover doesn't work anymore, but this is a pretty cool DVD release by uh, Shameless, it's also known as The Smuggler. Then we have what is probably my favorite Fulci film between this and The Beyond. I'm not sure what is my favorite, but this is up there, and I've made a complete review on this movie. Then we have Conquest, which is was is a kind of um, sorcerer, uh, sa sandal, whatever, sorcerer. It's a fantasy movie, which I usually don't care about. But I think this one is, of course, amazing. It has Fulci gore, Fulci supernatural, Fulci ambience, and it's greasy. Uh, the Sick on Cinema Boys describe this one as greasy, and I couldn't agree more with them. It's a greasy movie. Murder Rock, I haven't seen yet. It's, I have this DVD for a while. Uh, it's a later film of his. The House of Clocks. Uh, it was okay. Uh, this is later Fulci. Later Italian filmmaking. I think this is from the 90s. It's not great. But it's not bad either. And Voices from Beyond, I couldn't even finish. This was probably my most disappointing experience watching a full chief film. So I'll move my stepladder and we'll move on to Mario Bava. All right, moving on to Mario Bava. And uh, we're starting with The Whip and the Body, starring Christopher Lee and uh, Dalia Lavi. Um, this one is one that needs to be talked about more when we talk about Mario Bava. Honestly, this is one of my favorite. It is incredible. Same thing for this one, which was released under the Redemption line by Kino. I don't know why it's not like the other ones, just a Kino classic, but, you know, I guess it's a, it's a Redemption line. And that's Hatchet for the Honeymoon. Again, you would think this is a giallo, but it kind of has giallo-esque qualities, but it also has this Mario Bava supernatural um, atmosphere quality. It's a, another great one, highly recommended. This one I just bought, I haven't seen yet, it's Planet of the Vampire. I was kind of skeptical whenever I saw this at the store because I'm not a big fan of sci-fi. But it did say in the back that it had this gothic horror feel and uh, zombies, space vampires, so that was fucking... That sounded cool. Black Sunday by Mario Bava. Holy shit, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> this is a masterpiece of gothic horror. It's incredibly atmospheric. It is a beautiful movie. I love it. Evil Eye, the one that is um, often, you know, um, said to be the birth of the Giallo. It's also amazing. And I should have put Black Sabbath next to Black Sunday, because, you know, they have basically the same title. Uh, Black Sabbath also fucks. This movie is amazing. This is one that people should know more. Kill Baby Kill is probably my favorite Mario Bava film. If I had to say one specifically, it's right up there. And then the House of Exorcism. Um, it's good. It's not my favorite. Now, Blood and Black Lace. That's another one I love. And this one will... Um, if you watch this one, it will remind you a lot of a later Giallos. This was basically... Evil Eye created, aka the genre, Blood and Black Lace perfected it. Uh, the visual, it's beautiful, the music, the it's just a wonderful movie. And that was back when Cameron Mitchell was actually a good actor and he cared. Now this one I have the poster, the original Italian poster. It stars the beautiful Edwidge Fenech and that is Five Dolls for an August Moon. Uh, it's good. It's not my favorite, like it's a solid 6 out of 10. <laughs> the 
This one, Bloodbath, aka something, I kind of forget the, the like actual titles. A Bay of Blood, yeah, that's the one. Uh, this is a, this was credited to basically inspire a lot of the um, later 80s American slasher, and you can clearly see how they were influenced by this film, especially the Friday the 13th franchise. And it's it's good. It's far from being my favorite. It's uh, it's but it's a good one. Now this is different for Mario Bava, which makes it probably my favorite. It's right up there with uh, Kill Baby Kill, and that is Kidnapped. Now this is a straight up exploitation film from the maestro of goth horror. So it's amazing. Moving on to Dario Argento. Um, as you guys know, I'm not the biggest Argento fan. Uh, Suspiria is a masterpiece. Deep Red is good. But the rest of the movies that I've seen, at least, from Dario Argento, kind of feel underwhelming. This one I haven't seen. This is the bird with the pr crystal plumage. This is the later... Uh, I, I, I mean, this is one of the most recent ones that I got. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Now, Deep Red is amazing, but I have a lot of issues with it. Uh, I Again, I just think like most Argento films, there's something missing. I think it's, you know, it's more often than not the, the ending. It's not as satisfying, but I think Deep Red is probably my second favorite from him. It is a masterpiece. Now, the hot take coming. This isn't that good. I didn't really like this one. I don't even remember if I see if I've seen this one. I oh, okay, I haven't seen Phenomena. I've seen Inferno. It was disappointing. Uh what's the original title of this one? I don't it's something about a cat. Uh I again, most of his films for me are forgettable. I think I've seen it. And then there's, of course, his masterpiece, which is in my top, like, ten favorite horror movies of all time. So, I can't really say I'm not a Dario Argento fan. But this one is, of course, his uh, swan song, his masterpiece. Moving on to somebody that I really love uh, more than Argento, and that is Sergio Martino. And let's start with Torso, which is an incredible giallo, one of my favorite. The cast is lovely. And uh, the it's pretty brutal, honestly. It's a fuck. Sergio Martino was ahead of his time with how brutal some of his films were, and this is a great example. A suspicious death of the minor, or something like that. Again, I've reversed the covers. I don't really remember the English titles, but this one, holy shit, is it brutal? I love it. And this, this one too, The Strange Vices of Mrs. Ward. Ah, oh, god damn. With Edwidge Fenich. Damn, that's a good movie. Same thing with All Colors of the Dark. Now, this one is very weird, very experimental, very out there, but I love it. Now, this was a strange one for me. The Island of the Fishman by Sergio Martino. And I wasn't expecting much when I bought this. And I was highly pleasantly surprised because, again, this is Martino, who's a master at his craft, doing something that, as the premise of a B-movie, I loved it. Now, of course, my last Sergio Martino film, The Violent Professional, um, a great Politeski movie, not my favorite, but again, a prime example of how Martino just does any does everything well, any genre he works in. Now we're moving on to another underrated director that has easily become one of my favorite Italian directors, and that's Massimo Della Manno, with, of course, my favorite giallo of all time. It has to be. It has to be right up there. What have you done to Solange? Holy shit. It's sleazy, it has Camille Keaton, it's incredible. One day I'll have to do an entire review on this one. It deserves so much praise, I'm not sure why it's not as well known, 
especially in Italian. Well, it's pretty well known in the Italian movie circle, but man, this should be a fucking mainstream success. It, this should be, you know, just how, like, as well known as Suspiria, you know? As well known as Deep Red, as well known as any Mario Bava movie. This one fucks. <laughs> What have you done to what have they done to your daughter? Now this is also a Massimo Telemano. Now this plays more like a Polizeski movie with some aspect of a giallo. It's incredible. It's awesome too. Now we have a black veil for Lisa. Not my favorite from him, but it's definitely very interesting. It does do a good job, you know, with uh Again, criticizing, criticizing the Catholic Church and their hypocrisy. And yeah, it's a lovely movie. Now moving on to somebody who sadly um, passed away not too long ago. The Ghetto di Etato, a legend. And uh, I recently watched this one. If you're following me on Instagram, you should know. And it's amazing. This is not really a giallo. It is a thriller, but a sex crime thriller. It's quite impressive, it is very slow, it's about the characters, but it does a good job at that. And there is uh, plenty of titties. Now, one of my favorite Polizieski film, Polizieski, I, I always say that wrong, is Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Holy shit. Mwah. It's... Ruggiero Diodato was a master at violence. And this is no exception. Jungle Holocaust, of course. Uh, now we're getting into his uh, cannibal run of movies. Uh, yeah, Jungle Holocaust, not my favorite from him. But it's a really good Jungle Cannibal movie. Same thing with... Oh, Cut and Run. Yes, I still have that old Anchor Bay DVD. It's good. It's fun. It's a one. It's a good one. Uh, Michael Berryman, I think, is in this one. It's good. But you yeah, know, it doesn't really compare to Cannibal Holocaust, which, by the way, this is the edition to get. Um, Grindhouse releasing Blu-ray. Holy fuck! Yeah, I think you know what I think about this one. This is a legendary masterfully masterpiece of trash and sleaze and exploitation house on the edge of the park again is probably a second most well-known film and it's also awesome now we're moving on umberto lenti with of course this old shriek show dvd with a terrible cover art like what is this <laughs> from their giallo collection um, what is this cover? Anyways, I haven't seen it yet. Again, uh, from Shriek Show, the OGs from their Eurocult collection. Why not their Giallo collection? I don't know. Seven Bloodstained Orchids, which is awesome. Again, Shriek Show, the OGs, Eaten Alive. Um, I, I love Eden Alive. I fucking love Eden Alive. Nightmare City. Nightmare City. What can we say about Nightmare City other than it being a terrible movie, but so awesome at the same time? Now, the other really well-known, controversial cannibal, jungle uh, cannibal movie, Cannibal Ferox. And I'm always debating. So if you want uh, greedy realism, that's, you know, a movie that stays with you, you watch Holocaust. If you want Cannibal Holocaust but fun, you watch Cannibal Ferox. Now, Umberto Lenzi's probably Polizeski masterpiece of the tough ones in this beautiful Grindhouse releasing release. Uh, is this Umberto Lenzi? Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. Almost Human, Henry Silva, Thomas Milian, 
another great Politsky film. And finally, for the Lenzi, Nightmare Beach, which was his attempt at making an American slasher. I'm pretty sure he used like an alias that sounded more American in this one. Uh, it's a fun ass movie. Now we're getting into my very, very small Lamberto Bama, Lamberto Bava collection, which I've met him and he's great. Blast Fighter. Blast Fighter is awesome. It's a great 80s action film. Way better than a lot of what is, what are, what have become, you know, American action film cult classics. In my opinion, this is better than a lot of those. Then we have, of course, what he is mainly known for, and that is the Demons film. Do I really need to say anything about the Demons films? I think we all know. And then this one, which gets a lot of flack just because it played on Mystery Science Theater, and I think I'll take it out just so I can have more space. And that is Devilfish. It's a fun shark devilfish movie. Highly recommended. It's not great, but you won't regret watching it at least once. So I'm kind of too far away for the bed, but too close for the um, for the stepladder. So I'll go quickly. These are my Michel Suave, which was probably the best Italian director that did, you know, 90s and late 80s stuff. This is The Church. Amazing movie. He was kind of the uh, prodigy of uh, Dario Argento. The Sect, again, this is incredible. And how can we forget about what is probably the greatest horror film of the 1990s, proving that no, 1990s horror wasn't bad, just the American one, and that is De La Morte, De La Mort, holy shit. Then of course, uh, I think he got his start, I'm not sure if this was his first feature film, but a Stage Fright, a great, great slasher film. Now we're moving on to my little Enzo G. Cascarelli collection, Street Law, which I now have a poster, a original one sheet. And uh, yeah, this is one of also the best Polietzeski film. Then we have some some post-apocalyptic post action films. Uh, the New Barbarians. I, w I wish I had the rest of this series, but I only have this one, sadly. I know Shameless released them all, and... Uh, Blue Underground released some of them on Blu-ray, but this one is a fun-ass time. And we have The Inglorious Bastards, which uh, is also a great World War II film. Then we're moving on to one of my favorite directors, but for that I think I can jump on the bed. So I unironically un love Bruno Mattei, and he's one of my favorite directors. And SS Girls is a great way to get into him. I've done a complete uh, review on this film, which is still one of my favorite videos about one of my favorite films. Then we have Zombies of the Beginning. Holy shit. This one is some trash ass mid 2000 garbage, and it's amazing. There's a Yetzi zombie. For some reason, there's a Bigfoot zombie that just appears for one scene, kills people, and then he leaves. It's weird. It's amazing. The Jail, The Woman's Hell. Now you really also need to cover this one in an entire different video. Now I've covered... <laughs> I've covered a lot of Bruno Mattei apparently because I also covered this one in a video again It's one of my favorite videos and again. This is one of my favorite films from him then we have is Laura Gemser entry because every Italian di trash director had to make a movie with Laura Gemser and this one is a double feature two Bruno Mattei films for the price of one Women's Prison Massacre, the uncut version, and Cage Women, two great women in prison film. Now we're getting into some bootlegs, which I know they've been officially released, but I like my bootlegs. And that's Reb Brown in Robo War. A, uh, a Terminator, Alien, or Commando ripoff. 
I think this one is uh, Alien ripoff, and this is of course a Commando ripoff with Strike Commando again with Reb Brown. Uh, this is the famous one where they die and talk about Disneyland. B having like trees made of popcorn or some shit. It's an incredible movie. Now I haven't seen this one yet. It's a Giallo from the mid or late 90s from Bruno Mattei. Again, you know, he was always on the trends. <laughs> yeah. Giallos were dead for like 20 years and you had Bruno Mattei being like, you know what, I'm gonna make a Giallo. Same thing for like the 2000s, like Cannibal and Woman in Prison film. Like, bruh, you're out of date, man. Then we have, of course, two of his most famous ones. I have a rats. I have a rats poster signed by Garetta Garetta, and of course, Hill of the Living Dead. Which, if it wasn't for that damn middle part, it would be some of the greatest trash zombie film ever. Then we have this one, which I haven't seen yet, which is surprising because Caligula is one of my favorite movies and. Having these Caligula ripoffs made by Joe Diamato uh, and uh, Bruno Mattei, uh, I just think I've been turned off by the running time because this one I think is the unrated. Oh, it's not too bad. It's one one. It's one oh one minute. I think the Joe Diamato one is like two hours. Then we have Shocking Dark, which is an alien ripoff, and it also as um, Garetta Garetta in it, and it's also amazing. Now we're getting into the Diamato Man, the true legend himself. And we'll start with Endgame, which I haven't seen yet. This is a media, German media books, media box, whatever they call it. One of my favorite, that's not an Emmanuel film, and that's Anthropophagus. Then we have Emmanuel in America, probably the sleaziest Emmanuel film. And I also have the Severin box set of Emmanuel films. They're just not on the shelves. They're somewhere else. Emmanuel and the Last Cannibal were in the Last Cannibals. I'm not sure if this is uncut because I've seen this one in a movie theater, and I remember scenes that were there that don't seem to appear in this one. So I might have to chuck out a few bucks there for the Severin. Might just get the DVD of the Severin release instead. But we'll see. Now this is a weird one. Death smiles on a murder. This is not sleazy at all. It's just a thriller kind of giallo-esque film. But, you know, by Joe Diamato. Now this is a Caligula, the untold story. And this is the one I think uh, the uh, uncut is 121 minutes. That's a long, that's long for a, a Caligula movie. <laughs> Then we have Emmanuel and Françoise, that uh, it doesn't star Laura Gemser, it doesn't star Laura Gemser, and it was really sad, and it's not that great. Unlike Beyond the Darkness, which I also have a one sheet of, well, this movie rules. This is disgusting in so, on so many levels, but it rules. Then we have Emmanuel and the White Slave Trade, which I think I've seen. Then we have, um, this section I think is the uh, Raro video. Now we're no longer in like directors, we're basically like it's a free-for-all. And we have Fernando Delio, the Italian crime collection, Caliber 9, the Italian connection, the boss, rulers of the city. I've seen the Italian collection connection and I've seen the boss, they're both awesome. Uh, this was because the DVD was like $20 cheaper, so I got the second box set, or the first one, no, it's volume 2, on DVD, and that is Naked Violence, Shoot First, Die Later, and Kidnap Syndicate. I've only seen Kidnap Syndicate, and it was awesome. Lidian, Lidian Cavani e Cannibali. I haven't seen this one yet, it's not a jungle... Cannibal film, it uh, it is much, it, it, I think it's an art film about revolution and sex and everything, so uh, it's probably more for like, uh, you know, your, uh, your, your criterion crowd, which I'm part of, so I'll probably enjoy it. Hitchhike with Franco Nero and David Hess, holy shit, this movie is awesome, 
I love this one. It's directed by Pascale Festa Campanile. It is known as Autostop Rosso Senge in Italian, and it's incredible. I kind of forgot I own this one. Teenage Prostitution Racket. It's a crime film. Lots of sex. The title is very sleazy. Speaking of which, Deported Women of the SS Special, special Section. I love Nazi exploitation films. And this is one of the greats. Last House on the Beach. Pretty self explanatory. This is the Last House on the Left ripoff, and it's a good one. Bloody Pit of Horror is this very funky 60s cheesy film, and it's really good. Libido, I haven't watched this one, but is it is directed by Ernesto Gastaldi, who wrote many, many gialli in the 1960s and 70s. Nosferatu in Venice with Klaus Kinski, I haven't seen it yet. Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile 2, these movies rule. Ah, uh, Claudio Fergasso, Night Killer. If you haven't seen Night Killer... Don't even watch reviews of it, which there are plenty of. The Horror Geek made one, which is one of the best ones. But go into this film blind, and you'll love it. This is a better So Bad It's Good movie than Troll 2. In my opinion, Troll 2 is just kind of boring. This is a way better So Bad It's Good. It's a way better first time experience. It's an incredible film. I haven't seen this one yet, Escape from Women's Prison. As you can see, I love myself some women in prison film. Paganini Horror. This one is starring Donald Pleasance and it's directed by... Who directed this one? I don't know. Uh, it's not great. It has its moment. <laughs> Bilet, the Demon of Incest. Now this... Is a movie. Now this is Italian exploitation and Italian sleaze at its finest. It also has the same cover as a film that I'll later talk about in the Camille Keen box set called Sex Witch. The same kill, uh, the same, the same cover. Uh, do I recommend Beleth the Demon of Incest? Yes, I do. Actually, I, I kind of. I, this is a this is a great this is a not a great movie it's terrible but it's a fun one. Speaking of fun movies, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley has to be one of the funnest jungle cannibal movie out there. It's fun. It's amazing. I'm just gonna move along. The Black Cat. This is uh, based obviously on Edgar Allan Poe, and is uh, tales. Um, this is a 90s one. I haven't seen it yet. The Wax Mask. I haven't seen it yet. Now we're getting into the section of Giallo slash Arrow video. Uh, Liguana de la Lenga di Fuerco. This is the Iguana with Tongue of Fire or something like that. I haven't seen it yet. The Red Queen Kills Seven Times is a really fun, really good Giallo. I always forget the original title to this one, but this one is also pretty, pretty hardcore for a 70s giallo, and it's also pretty fun. The Night Evelyn Came Out of Her Grave. I'm not sure if I've seen this one. No, I've seen the Red Queen Kill seven times, but I haven't seen this one yet. Death Walks on High Heels again. This is such an incredible film, such an incredibly over, uh, underrated giallo. And same things, because they're the same director, I think. Death Walks at Midnight, it's also a really cool giallo, and this cover is awesome. Now some uh, a little uh, spaghetti western. We have the original Django, of course, with Franco Nero. Whew, this one is great. I love Django. Uh, prepare coffin. No, is that the original? No, this isn't the original. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. My original. I have the original Django, but it's the Blue Underground release. I just forgot about it. Um, no, this is Django prepares a coffin, a, a sequel. I don't know if it's a legit sequel or not, but it's a. It's still a fun movie, and it's still a great Django film. 
It's not as good as Day of Anger, which is probably one of the best spaghetti western ever, and this was the first Aero Canada release, and it's amazing. A Pistol for Ringo and a Return of Ringo. Uh, not the greatest spaghetti westerns, but they're definitely fun spaghetti westerns. Then we have Beyond the Door, which is such an Exorcist ripoff. It's if I was somebody behind the Exorcist, I would have to sue them. It's insane, and it it it's Beyond the Door and Beyond the Door Three because I'm not even sure if there's really a two because it's one of those Italian series that have twelve different titles, but they're some of the cheesiest, shittiest, but funnest. Uh, Italian exploitation films out there. Speaking of which, I've made an entire video on the Gestapo's last orgy. Go check that one out. This is more of an artsy uh, <laughs> giallo, but it's it's pretty good, just far from being my favorite. The Antichrist I just got, I haven't seen it yet. Same thing for Cannibal Apocalypse. Now Solo and <laughs> the 120 Days of Sodom. I've talked about plenty in a video, so I won't go too much into detail. Eight and a half, I haven't seen it yet. The Night Porter is a pretty good uh, movie, and this is what inspired a lot of the trashy um, subsequent Italian Nazi exploitation films. Three movies, Demons, The Other Hell, Demons 3, and Black Demons. I've only seen The Other Hell. Which is probably my least favorite film from Bruno Mattei. To me, it's his worst. I know, big shocker. Then we have the zombie sequels, which I also talked about in a video. They're fun. Zombie 3 is fun. Zombie 4 is fun. Zombie 5 I haven't talked in that video about, but uh, it's fun too. Zombie Holocaust is a great mix between an Italian 70s zombie film, or 80s, sorry, zombie film and a jungle cannibal film. I'm just gonna scoot right along. My arm is getting tired, Jesus Christ. Slaughter Hotel, starring Klaus Kinski. Um, I haven't seen this one yet. The Psycho Killer triple feature. I, I, am, I am basically only keeping this release because I've got Blu-rays for House on the Edge of the Park and Beyond the Darkness. I'm keeping it for Delirium, which I don't think has got a um, a uh, a um, a Blu-ray release yet. And it's directed by Lamberto Bava, which explains why it's awesome. Burial Ground, Burial Ground, Nights of Terror. This is also much better in the you know, vein of so bad it's good than uh, than Troll 2. Then we have these triple features, A Blade in the Dark, Macabre, and Mario Bava's Shock. Again, these are all Lamberto Bava movies, other than Shock, but he did end... Um, but Mario Bava did get sick when he made this one, and it was finished by his son. So I have way more La Lamberto Bava movie than I thought, but they're just away from the Lamberto Bava. Then we have The Bloodstained Shadow, Night, Short Nights of a Glass Dolls, and Who Saw Her Die. Which, Who Saw Her Die might be the Franco Nero movie that I forgot the name, I'm not sure. Uh, I've seen one of those, I'll have to rewatch them. Now this was one of my first Giallo that I ever had, and that is the, for photos, uh, the Forbidden Photos of the Lady Above Suspicion, starring Suzanne Scott. It's an amazing giallo. Again, very underrated. Same thing for uh, Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eyes. It's a really, really good giallo. Now we're getting into some shocking material. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. Sorry, guys, my, my fucking... Then I have these. They're just, you know, they're holding everything up. So the three Africa, Blood and Guts, Goodbye, Uncle Tom, The Godfathers of Mondo. I've seen the Africa Blood and Guts, and of course I've seen Goodbye Uncle Tom. They're some of my favorite shockumentaries. They're amazing. They're so beautiful. The music is intense. It's amazing. Night Train Murders. This is basically another Italian last house on the left, and it's pretty okay. Killer Nun. I didn't really like. It's with Anita Ekberg, and I thought it was like most... 
non-exploitation films, as in it was boring. And then finally for this uh, shelf, we have Contamination by Luigi Cozy, a clear alien ripoff and a fun movie that's a tad too long in my opinion. I thought I was done with the stepladder, but my, my arms already hurt. <laughs> so, uh, stepladder it is. Now, we are moving on to, again, one of my favorite directors. Again, very much uh, lots of sleaze in his filmography, and that is, of course, Tinto Brass with uh, Salon Kitty, which is another one that inspired a lot of Nazi exploitation films. Kind of created. There was two like types of Nazi exploitation films: one inspired by the Night Porters, and the other ones inspired by Salon Kitty. Uh, why isn't that with my Enzo G. Coscarelli movies? Is that an Enzo G. Coscarelli movie? I kind of forgot. This is kind of like a, um, a, uh, a, um, James Bond, uh, spy thriller. I got this whenever I was, like, getting into Italian cinema and I was kind of trying to figure out which subgenres I like and didn't like. And I think this one is uh, in the uh, the veins that I don't really like. I've watched this once whenever I got it, when I was really, like, young. I think I was, like, 18 or 17. And I haven't rewatched it since, because I kind of found it boring. Strip nude for your killer. Ultra trashy fun. And that is the perfect way to describe this one. It is ultra trashy, and it is ultra fun. Also one I need to rewatch. Now this is the original Django, of course this is a masterpiece of Spaghetti Western, one of the greatest, and Franco Nero is one of the greatest Italian actors. Now speaking of, of course, great Spaghetti Westerns, we have the anthology, you know, uh, Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, and Duck You Sucker. Then we have this singular... Uh, limited edition, collector's edition, I guess, of the good, the bad, the ugly. Wonderful piece of cinema. It's, of course, a classic. But you have to take a whole afternoon to watch it, because holy shit, it's long. Uh, two more um, uh, spaghetti westerns, two that are not as well known. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken... I thought one of them was directed by Lucio Fulci, but I think I'm getting it confused with one of those multi-packs that I have lying somewhere. Uh, Killer Caliber 32 and Killer Ad Adios. I th I've seen Killer Adios, and it was pretty cool. Now, this is a little shitty, uh, you know, 12 pack of Spaghetti Westerns by Mill Creek, but one that was honestly worth the price of admission because it does have a lot of good... Um, spaghetti westerns. Uh, one of them I've seen, I think it was uh, Django Kill. Yep, yeah, Django Kill, which is one of those unofficial Django sequels. Uh, then we have more Giallos The House with Laughing Wildo by Pulpi Avatis, which was a surprising one. Uh, I've heard Eli Roth talk about this one a long ass time ago on Trailers from Hell, and I was always um, curious. And then I finally bought it, and it was worth the 18 American dollars I paid for it. Eyes in the Labyrinth, a decent, decent giallo. Now this one has another uh, title. It's directed by Aldo Laldo, The Child. Uh, this is again one of those German media books. Now these Grindhouse, Full Moon Grindhouse present SS Hell Camp. Which is so sleazy, so trashy, but yet so much fun. Then we have Riot in a Woman's Prison. Uh, again, very sleazy. And then we have this one, Sergio Garone, SS Experiment Love Camp. Holy shit, does this one not pull any punches in its trashiness. Now this is one that the boys on the Sick on Cinema podcast talk about a lot, but I haven't seen it yet. It's been re it was released by Synapse, and it is Flavia the Heretic. Then we have this one that's still seal. 
Alien 2 on Earth. Uh, again, this is um, classic rip-off exploitation from Italy. And apparently this one inspired uh, the, that, the Descent, apparently. Exploitation double feature, Super Bitch and Black Cobra Women, which of course Black Cobra, Black Cobra Women is a uh, Emmanuel film. Again, a lot of films were called Emmanuel that weren't Emmanuel. And I'm pretty sure Super Bitch, I've heard a lot of good things about. Um, it might be directed by Massimo Della Mano, I'm not sure. A cheesy flicks release of Emmanuel, Queen of the Desert. So if you have a releasing company and you want to make money from me, just release something with Emmanuel in the title because I have so many of these unofficial like, it's not even directed by Joe D'Amato, it's directed by Bruno Fontana, and it's just because uh, Laura Gemser is in the movie, so they're like, yeah, let's call it Emmanuel, Queen of the Desert. Savage Man, Savage Beast, which has to have the worst pixelated shitty cover ever. The Sinful Nuns of St. Valentine's, not the biggest nunsploitation fan, well, from Italy at least. But uh, Good Bad Flicks did do a review of this one, and it looked pretty darn good. Gore in Venice, I've talked about this one in depth, go watch that video. Troll 2, eh, it's not that great. And lastly, uh, Kioma, which is a great western, and The Grand Duel, which is a great western, aka The Big Showdown, pretty cool western and it's this uh, mill creek shitty uh, double feature but the transfers do look pretty neat now we are moving on to asian cinema and of course the first section is japanese cinema which i uh, adore uh, i have a lot of different japanese movies again i have an eclectic taste in movies so i have anything from you know criterion to like your typical your fucking pink who exploitation films and this is a pretty interesting box set so it's from criterion it's from their eclipse series which i'm pretty sure they stopped doing which was a um a more um how do i say it they released movies and like not as good transfer but they did release like a lot of them on like a box set but, you know, the transfers are still pretty good. You know, it's still Criterion. And these are a collection of 60s. I think one of them might be 50s. Um, Japanese B-movies. Now, I really need to re-watch the ones I've watched and the ones I haven't watched, obviously. Because um, I originally watched these very much depressed. Probably in my biggest rut of 2020. And I didn't pay really any attention. I was too busy uh, trying to, you know, have a, a girlfriend that, whatever, never worked out. Anyways, uh, I need to rewatch these. Now this, of course, I've talked in length about the Female Prisoner Scorpion franchise. Anytime I can talk about it, I do because it's genuinely some of my favorite movies of all time. And I've recently covered the first one in a video which i'll definitely try to cover the rest of them in other videos now again meiko kaji five films the stray cat rock um series and these i guess you could um call them pinky violence that would be the genre where it was basically exploitation films in japan in the 70s where there were um female characters in gangs or shit like that uh and yeah delinquent girl boss wild jumbo sex hunter machine animal and beat 71 i haven't finished this series yet um but i'll get on to it pretty soon the daijamin collection again i've recently purchased this and um Again, I've watched the first one, and it was it was really cool. Uh, there are these 70s kaiju movies, but that are period pieces too, and that are very much, I think, in, um, like, uh, represent the religious beliefs, something like that. The Ring Collection, <laughs> I love. Uh, this is The Ring, The Ring 2, and Ring 0. I haven't seen Ring 0 yet. I love the first ring. It's one of the most depressing, spooky, atmospheric 
J-horror film of all time. And I can't wait to get my Juhan collection, which is in the mail right now. I hope I can get it pretty soon, because it's been a while. The Graveyards of, Hon of Honor. Now, these are two movies... Uh, with the same title, the, the 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 first one is of course the original, and the second one was a remake by Takashi Miike. I've only seen the original, and it's one of these um, very prominent Yakuza film from Japan in the 70s, and it's really an amazing one. Uh, I I can't wait to dig into Takashi Miike's remake or reboot. I don't know what you call it, um, but it's you know it's a bit long. <laughs> The film of Shinya Tsukamoto, of course, Tetsuo the Iron Man, which I've covered on my channel. And then there's Tetsuo 2, The Adventure of Denshu Kozo, Tokyo Fist, which I've heard that I would love a lot. Bullet Ballet, A Snake of June, which another, is another one that's been highly recommended. Vital, Haze, Kotoko, and Killing. Now this is the Taisho Trilogy, a, uh, uh, this was released by Arrow Academy. Uh, this is more like art films from uh, a director I have uh, some movies from, of course, uh, the Senjun Suzuki, which is uh, a director we'll talk about a lot in this section of the video. Then we have the Sister Street Fighter collection, some karate martial arts films from Japan, of course, with Etsuko Shiomi and Sony Shiba. I love this one. The Bloodthirsty Trilogy. So they're basically hammer vampire films, but made in Japan in the 70s. And they're very atmospheric, very short. Like, they're quick watches, and they're beautiful to look at. They don't always make sense, but they're beautiful to look at. Sailor Suit Machine Gun, uh, Sailor Suit and Machine Gun, I haven't seen this one yet, it's like a 90s uh, Japanese uh, action film. Alright, Takashi Miike, the Black Society Trilogy, now this is a trilogy of three films that I guess are um, sequels or related in some type of way, uh, a lot of them feel differently, Shinjuku Triad Society feels more like an action comedy, and Rainy Dog and Ley Lines are serious, very emotional-filled dramas. And uh, they're pretty much all incredible. This was one, again, a complete blind buy. All I knew was it was Takashi Miike, and I was pleasantly surprised. Which is probably the opposite of this franchise, Dead or Alive, which I love. But the past of uh, the Black Tri... Uh, a Black Society trilogy was a, a serious dra dram drama like Yakuza films. These are insane, absurdist, just silly Yakuza movies. The Bird People of China. Now, I haven't seen this one, but it uh, reflects a theme that's present in a lot of Miike's film, which is uh, racism and the uh, relationship between... The Japanese, the Chinese, the Koreans, and everything. I think Black Society tri Trilogy talks a lot about that. And uh, yeah, so this is more of a serious drama. Visitor Q, I've made an entire video about. It's also insanely fun. Akari, uh, Arakiri, it's one I got for really cheap. And I, all I knew was Takashi Miike. I haven't seen it yet. Same thing for Yakuza Apocalypse, I haven't seen it yet, I basically just got those two because they were Takashi Miike movies for like a buck a pop. I got this at like a closing video store. Audition, do I really need to talk about Audition? It's one of Takashi Miike's most well-known films. Not my favorite, but um, it's, well, not my favorite, it's still great. Uh, the One Miss Call trilogy. These are comedies, co comedies kind of parodies of the J horror explosion in the late '90s, early 2000s, and these were remade by Americans, and they kind of missed the point of these being comedic. 
Blade of the Immortal, I think is most recent film that I ho that I own from Mickey. I also saw it in the theater. It's based on a manga and it's a great adaptation. I'm unfamiliar with the source material, but from weeaboos that I know, it, apparently it's a great adaptation. Lesson of Evil, it's a film about a school shooting. I haven't seen it yet. First Love wasn't my favorite Mike film, but it was still okay. Ichi the Killer, one again, one of his most well known because you know it, I guess it falls into the disturbing movie categories. It's fun, it's uh, it's uh, I think I like it better than Audition, but the CGI is terrible. Now we're moving on to The Man, The Myth, The Legend, Sion Sono, which I adore, is filmography. <laughs> and we're starting with Love Exposure, which is insanely long. It's four hours and a half, I think. I've watched this also when I wasn't feeling that great. I will need to rewatch it. Uh, even though I was not into it and I was feeling like shit, I still came out of it thinking it was amazing, so imagine if I paid more attention to it and if I actually watched it. Cold Fish is so great. This is probably my favorite from him. Guilty of Romance is also an incredibly beautiful poetic film. Land of Hope I haven't seen, it's a drama. Anti-Porno is another one of his masterpiece. This one is straight up just po poetic. It's a um, critique of, uh, well, it's a throwback to the Nikatsu um, Roman porno films. And it's a very, very artistic, very beautiful. It's dialogue heavy, the main character. It's just an incredible film. Highly recommended uh, you won't regret it. Now we have this one, which, uh, due to Arrow's decision to not translate the spines, I don't know what it's called. Um, it's from the director of Orgies of Edo and Horrors of Malformed Man, which I both have. It's, uh, uh, what's the goddamn name? Anyways, whatever it is, I think it's a Shoujun, a Shoju's Joy of Torture, something like that. It's a pretty nasty. It's honestly a, a movie that I would cover on my channel, and I should, because holy shit does it get, uh, it gets nasty. Same thing with Orgies of Edo. Uh, these are period pieces with a lot of SNM, and they're pretty good. Then we have uh, Yakuza Law. Uh, one of these Yakuza movies, but this one is a pretty violent and uh, it's, a, it's a fun one. Far from being my favorite, uh, it's by Tiro Ushi and uh, I think, is this the one? Okay, so it's uh, from the same director as the previous two. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not my favorite film from him, but it's definitely not bad. Uh, this is Inferno of Torture. Again, these are period pieces, SNM fetishy films. Um, I like him, I think. <laughs> and honestly, Horrors of Malformed Men, I'm gonna move because they're all from the same director, so I don't know why they're not all together. Uh, so, Horrors <laughs> of Malformed Men, one of the most underrated J horror film from this era. Uh, if you want a good review on it, uh, The Maniac on YouTube made an amazing review of this film, and I should maybe do one too. The Black Report, I just got this one, I haven't seen it yet. Then these are... Uh, I, I really hate how they don't translate the spine. Uh, Yasuzo Masumura, and this is Red Angel, and uh, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently it's pretty cool. This is Izumaki, something like that. I haven't seen it yet. I should, because, as you guys know, Blind Beast, I have gave an incredibly positive review. This is probably my favorite of these Japanese uh, late 60s, early 70s fetish kind of films. Uh, it's an incredible masterpiece. I love that one. 
Blind Woman's Curse. I think this was Meiko Kaji's first film, and it's pretty awesome. Wolf Guy. Now talk about a fun-ass Japanese action film from the 70s. This one is fun. And then we have something completely different. J. Horror Pulse. This is depressing as shit, but it's an incredible example of the power of J-Horror of the time. Highly recommend that this one. Alright, now we're getting back into Se Seijun Se Suzuki with Pistol Opera. And, uh, oh, I'm still on my wide angle. With Pistol Opera, and uh, this one I haven't seen yet. Uh, but it's one of these, I think, Pinky Violence film. Um... And it looks pretty cool. And I really love that title. Pistol Opera is probably one of the greatest titles ever. Then we have my only Akira Kurosawa film, which is strange because I'm a big fan of the types of films he made. And that is Rashomon. Uh, and uh, this one is more of an experimental kind of um, different from what from what he's known to actually direct, you know, he's known for his Yakuza movies, but this one is actually pretty experimental. I haven't seen it yet, because I'm bad like that. <laughs> now we're in my Criterion section, I guess you could say, and that is Onibaba. Now, wait, why didn't I get the Blu-ray? I don't know, I didn't feel like it. Also, I think I prefer this cover over the Blu-ray cover. Uh, I haven't seen any of these. <laughs> Same thing with Jigoku, but apparently this has a great representation of hell. Now, ones that I've actually seen, House is such a fun movie. This was apparently, I think I've heard it somewhere, written by the director's kid, who was like seven, and it feels like it. It's insane, balls to the walls, weirdness, and it's amazing. Kwaidan I haven't seen yet, because again, it's one of those that's like three hours, I think. Um, but I've seen the trailer, and it looks like my type of stuff. Do I really need to tell you that I love Lady Snowblood? Do I really need to? It lost in the polls, and I know the, the sick on Cinema boys were sad that it lost in the poll. Because I made a poll either reviewing um, um, Battle Royale... Um, female Prisoner Scorpion and a Lady Snowblood. And the Lady Snowblood was the third one, which was sad because uh, I like, I love all those, all those uh, three movies, but Lady Snowblood definitely has a special place in my heart. Now we're getting to third window films with Blue Spring, which was one of these nihilistic indie films from Japan. I haven't seen this one. Same thing with Destruction Babies. Uh, th these two I've heard from horrible reviews back in the day, and apparently they're pretty good. However, I did watch Love and Other Cults, and I absolutely love Love and Other Cults. This was uh, one of the greatest love stories ever told, uh, in a very weird and Japanese way, but it's beautiful. Same thing as Low Life Love. If you're an aspiring filmmaker and you've never seen Low Life Love, you need to change that right away. Grateful Dead is also a pretty fun movie from Japan. It's another one of those uh, indie, very crazy, very insane Japanese films. Same thing with One Cut of the Dead. Uh, One Cut of the Dead was recently remade by the French. I don't know why. It played at Fantasia. It looked like shit. Watch the original, people. <laughs> now, this one is one that's actually owned by my brother. However, he, he lent it to me. The World of Kanako is an amazing film that we don't talk about enough. It was released by Draft House Films, so I'm pretty sure it's like out of print. And I really need to do a video about this one, because it's one of the craziest, strangest, yet beautiful film from Japan. And a strangely beautiful story of a father and daughter. It's just a twisted tale, but you know, strangely beautiful. Same thing for this one. This was released by Kani. 
a um, Vinegar Syndrome Partner label. And uh, yeah, I also need to make a video about this one because I don't want to go too much into detail, but it, details, but it's beautiful. Another one of these VS Partner labels, I think this one is uh, Decanalog. Uh, I've, whenever I made my update talking about this one, I got a comment telling me that it was pretty good, so uh, I can't wait to watch it. Now we're getting into the Pinku and Roman Porno uh, collection, and of course we're starting off with the master Isaiah Susato, Rewind. I've also talked plenty about this film. Uh, <clears throat> we'll just skip this one. Yeah, these titles and cover, well, just, you know, you can look at them yourself. Flower and Snake, one of my first videos about a Roman porno film, and still one of my favorite of the genre. Same thing with Fairy in the Cage, which I'll quickly... Oh, these, these ones are gonna have nudity. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna need to censor shit. God damn it, I didn't want to. Edit these too hard. Tokyo Decadence by Unearthed Classics. I haven't seen it yet. I've only heard good things though. Okay, so I think I'm going to release it anyways. But um, originally my podcast with Urschel was, was not supposed to be a podcast with Urschel. I just recorded the first episode and we saw that we had a, an amazing chemistry. And we were like, yo, let's just do that instead. But I did record a podcast by myself where where I went into deep details of School of the Holy Beast and why it's an amazing movie. And I think I'm going to release it anyways, just under, you know, a different title. Maybe like a, a Open Casket Podcast episode something point five. So if you want to see that, let me know. Sins of Sister Lucia, very much an exploitation film. Again, it's in uh, the Nikatsu line, and it's amazing. Now we're getting into some pinky violence. We have Rika, which is amazing. I need to watch the sequels. Again, this was um, Jesse Midnight Crawler. Crawler is Asian takeout videos. Uh, inspired me to buy this, and I haven't regretted it since. Same thing with Sex and Fury, uh, and... Uh, it's two films by no, Norifumi Suzuki and uh, Sex and Fury I watched. It's with uh, Christina Lamberg and uh, whoo, whoo, it's, it gets spicy. Shogun Assassin. Now, uh, the backstory of this one is it's like a recut version of the two Wolf and the Cubs film, which I need to watch because if they're, <laughs> if, if they're basically this, uh, this movie is insane. And it's insanely fun, and it's insanely gory, and it's just a great time. I also own this on VHS. That was the first time I watched this. I actually watched it on VHS. Now for more... I'm... Oh, I'm just... Wide angle time. Now for more of these very well-known, res respected films, and I don't know why I did this in this order, uh, but uh, Zatoishi. The Tale of Zatoishi 3... The Tale of Zatoishi 2 and The Tale of Zatoishi 1. Now these films got me into Japanese cinema. Not these ones specifically. Um, back when I was younger, when I was a weeb, I saw that, you know, anime was cool and all, but they also made movies that kind of were like anime. And that was when I first rented the Zatoishi film, I think the one from the mid-2000s, that might have been directed by Takashi Miike, don't quote me on that. And I fell in love. So I, I've been hunting the original Zatoishi films for so long, and I got lucky, I found them at a used bookstore for $10 each. However, they only had the first three. So if anybody has that Criterion box set of the Zaitoishi film that goes for too much money and you want to get rid of it, think of your boy Spooky. Violent Cop, a film by Takashi Kitano. Um, legend in Japanese 
uh, entertainment industry, of course. And uh, yeah, this one is also a pretty fun one. It's from the 80s. My camera doesn't want to focus, but it's it's great. I love this one. Now, I've talked about this twice at this point, so I think I don't need to get into too many details, but in Trails of a Virgin, it rules. I've also covered in Trails of a Beautiful Women, it rules. Go watch those videos. Organ, which I'm definitely gonna cover pretty darn soon. It's one of the few of these Japanese Pinku films directed by a woman, which makes it interesting already. And uh, she was the actress from Tetsuo the Iron Man, I think. Evil Dead Trap, I've covered this one. Evil Dead Trap 2, I'm gonna cover this one. Living Hell, aka the Japanese Chainsaw Massacre. Now, uh, my boy um, uh, Silas Massoff did comment that this was awesome, so uh, I should pretty I should watch it fairly soon. Now, Mike from Horror Geek uh, pretty much inspired me to buy this one, because as soon as he he was like halfway through his review, and I I added this to my cart. This is such a fun little. You know, shoestring budget, Evil Dead ripoff, but you know, in very much a Japanese fashion. I really liked. I really like this one. It's a, it's a fun one. Stacy, I was <laughs> on the hunt for this for so long, and then I finally found it at the Synapse table in Horrorama, and I watched it and was slightly disappointed. However. Again, I wasn't feeling it that day, and uh, there was a scene that gets really depressing, and whenever I don't feel it, and I see a depressing scene in a movie, I kind of zone out. Junk was one of the first reviews seen on this channel, and it's an amazing throwback to 70s Italian zombie movies, but made in Japan. Oh, now we're getting into the... Um, uh, Daske Yamanuchi corner, which I've covered pretty much all of these. Kyoko vs. Yuki, Girl Hell, which go watch that video, Red Room 2, I've covered, Muzani was one of my first videos ever, like when I came back from my hiatus, uh, The Lady in the Sea of Blood, again I've covered this one, now we're getting into Anaru, which was recently covered by the Sick on Cinema Boys, we have Woman's Flesh, My Red Guts. Again, I've talked about this movie. Uh, Tumbling Doll of Flesh. You're, if you're not subscribed to me from the solo video, you're probably here from that video, so you know about it. Suicide Dolls, which, yes, I'll get into. Now we have my little, my little, my little banana box releasing corner. Of course, I love me, I love me Urschel. Urschel's a good dude. Uh, and his uh, company, Banana Box, has been releasing these, um, these, uh, some people call it bootlegs, I call them archives. <laughs> and one of them is Mute, and his uh, girlfriend, Odd Art, on Instagram does the cover, the covers, and they're, she's, she's a very talented, let's just say that, because when I saw this cover, I didn't even know what the film was, and I knew I had to instantly buy it. Blood Runner Zeros. Now I saw the um, the uh, the cinema's underbelly video, and I wanted to watch the, watch them and probably talk about them myself too. And uh, I think this was a, a big step for Urschel's little company because I think this was actually officially licensed or something like that. Anyway, the, it, I think it's director approved, so that makes it pretty cool. Then we have the unofficial sequel to the Guinea Pig franchise, and uh, I know the Second Cinema Boys like this one, but I th I saw it and I was kind of getting annoyed by the constant screaming. Tokyo Gore Police, a uh, pinnacle of Japanese cinema that launched movies like Machine Girl, which was also good, and I've covered this one on my channel. By the way, this is like a Korean bootleg or some shit that I bought at a convention. And then there was these inspired by Tokyo Gore Police that weren't so good, and that's Robo Geisha. Then we have, of course, the Guinea Pig Collection by Sloppy uh, Seconds. The unearthed collection I'd love to have, but uh, it's too expensive. 
especially because I haven't seen any of the guinea pig movies other than Lucky Sky Diamond, which again, I didn't like. Again, Sloppy Seconds, this is um, Midori. So you have the original Midori film, you have the real, um, real life adaptation, and you have a short film from the director, which is... Uh, uh, Midori is definitely a, a movie I want to talk about, and I think my opinion on it will be very controversial, because it's the type of movie that if you don't hate it, people think you're weird. But I think it's a beautiful tale of, um, you know, acceptance, loneliness, depression. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good watch. Now this is straight up hentai, and I'll cover it eventually. Now you can't be like a, a, a weeby guy without having a Kira, which again I watched this highly depressed. And it's still ruled, so imagine if I watch it now without being heavily depressed. Now, I saw this one in the theater and fell in love instant instantly. Ninja Scroll, the motion picture, it's amazing. I've covered this one, it's still one of my favorite hentai, I think. <laughs> which I need to get more. Urshul sent me this DM the other day with like a nurse hentai, which I really need to buy. Uh, my favorite anime of all time, if you're ever wondering, it's uh, Samurai Champloo. And I have more anime coming in. I have Paranoia Agent due to a friend's high recommendation. And speaking of Satoshi Khan, his masterpiece. What is not only the best, one of the best anime of all time, but what is definitely one of the greatest film of all time. And that is Perfect Blue. This movie is incredible and it proves that anime can be a serious media and a serious way to, you know, tell a story. Then we have the Gamera films. I got them when HMV was closing for like five bucks each and I haven't seen any of them because I'm not the biggest kaiju fan. I say that as I come up on my Godzilla collection, which is, you know, it's tiny, but it's big for somebody that apparently doesn't really like kaijus. Like I haven't seen any of these, but I'm pretty curious because it's seven of the 80s era of Godzilla and like Godzilla 2000. I know I've heard a lot of good things. So maybe I'll be more into these one. And it's just maybe the early, you know, the early kaiju film I'm not so much into. Although I did really love King Kong versus, versus Godzilla. It is a fun, fun film. Uh, this one, I haven't seen. And uh, yeah, there are repeats because I think this this one's on the 7. Are they both on the 7 pack? No, okay. I think Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah isn't on that 7 pack. The recent one, which I tried to watch. Again, I was fairly feeling like shit in 2020 and never had uh, never rewatched it but I need to rewatch it again because from what I remember it was it seemed enjoyable then we have Mothra okay I might be a kaiju fan <laughs> uh, this is one miss call too I don't know why I still have this on the shelf because this is a Korean bootleg or some shit like that and I have the trilogy on blu-ray from Arrow so I'll probably get rid of this Curse, Death, and Spirit? Eh, it's okay. It was an okay anthology film, you know. Uh, it's from the director of The Ring, and it it feels like it, you know. It's, it feels like a good J-horror film. It just... I think it's it was before he did The Ring, and it definitely feels cheap. I think they're all shot on video. Then we have Rampo Noir, and one of the uh, four chilling tales is actually directed by Isaiah Susato, so that's why I bought it. And then I saw that it's like two hour, uh, two hours long. The man who stole the sun. <laughs> uh, this movie rules. It's a very underrated. This is, I think, a yeah, it's a DVDR. This is a bootleg I got at a shop in Toronto. But it's a pretty weird, wacky, out there film. And it's a high recommend recommendation from me. Now this was also one of my earliest in my um, in my uh, Spooky's Dirty Movie Corner series. This was from I think that video was from twenty nineteen. It's not good, but I won't re redo that one because uh, 
The movie is decent. I just feel like the video speaks for itself. Now this was released by The Asylum and I got it apparently at Movies On The Go, which uh, I've never been to BC, so I probably got it from somewhere else. I think I got it online. Uh, <laughs> it's a Japanese movie released by, um, by The Asylum and from the producer of Ringu means nothing. I haven't seen it yet. Tokyo 10 plus 1. I didn't really like this one. Touch of Zero. I haven't seen this one. I found this at my local charity shop and it's a British or European release. Oh no, it's British. I don't know what it why it was there, but hey. Budo the Art of Killing. It's a documentary series. I thought it was something else. I accidentally bought it. I might watch it sometimes. And then we have this Kino. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, four action films from different places in Asia. And uh, Three Seconds Before Explosion is actually a Japanese 60s film. 60s or 70s. I haven't seen a lot of them. I've seen Three Seconds from Explosion. And I want to see the other ones. I just, you know, these box sets, you know, sometimes you don't have all the time in the world. Got this for pretty cheap, so, you know. All right, I don't think I need the stepladder anymore. So now we're getting into Hong Kong, Hong Kong movies. And of course, first we have Bruce Lee, the man, the myth, the legend. I love his movies. We have Fist of Fury, Chinese Connection, Return of the Dragon. Sorry, Game of Death and a documentary about the man. And then, of course, we have, because it wasn't on the box set, we have Enter the Dragon. Then we have some Jackie Chan movies. Um, new Police Story, which isn't as good as OG Police Story, but it's still a pretty fun, you know, movie. Uh, we have the latest Police Story, which is uh, more serious, from what I've heard. I haven't seen it yet, but it's Police Story Lockdown. I'll probably have to watch this with my brother, because he loves... Uh, uh, Police Story, I think it's one of his favorite action films of all time. Not to get confused, but we have Crime Story and The Protector. I watched, uh, I think The Protector or Crime Story. I watched one of them with my father. I'm pretty sure it was a Crime Story. And uh, it, was a, it was a fun time. I also watched this with my, uh, my father. Because uh, uh, yeah, he doesn't like horror movies, but he doesn't mind action movies. And Mr. Nice Guy, it's a fun one. And of course, yeah. Yeah, the police story one and two. Honestly, they're it's cliche, but they're probably my favorite um, martial art films from Hong Kong. It's just the stunts, the fight scenes, the characters. It's just a well-rounded, great film. Unlike my next one, which is Kung Fu Zombies. I haven't seen that one. I was speaking of Godfrey Ho's masterpiece, Robo Vampire. This movie is terrible, but it's fun. If you catch my live stream, I did, um, you can still watch them, by the way, but I did do a watch-along to one of Godfrey O's movie, and it was fun seeing the confusion from the audience who weren't that familiar with Godfrey Ho and his work. Uh, Iron Monkey, uh, you know it's great. Again, one of these uh, sets from uh, Mill Creek with uh, 12 kung fu films. Again, these sets are cheap and they've got some pretty go darn good movies. Um, Ninja Fists of Fire, I watched. Um, um, what else? Crane Fighter, I watched and it was actually pretty good. Uh, Drunken Tai Chi was amazing. Like, uh, yeah, these box sets, honestly, for the price, because you can get them used for like, what, five, four or five dollars for 12 movies like it's worth it now some dra dragon dynasty and of course john woo's the killer holy shit starring chow yun fat this is amazing this is one of my favorite john woo film um it's an incredible incredible film some shaw brothers stuff a return of the five deadly venom, aka crippled Avengers. Now, obviously, I bought this title for the absurd title of crippled Avengers, but it turns out to be a really good 
martial arts film. Um, did I watch this one? Pretty sure I did. Because I was, I had a phase where I watched a lot of these, but this one looks more modern. Maybe it's just the, the, the art. Um, <clears throat> don't remember, actually. Of course, the 36th Chamber of Shaolin, which I, I now own multiple copies of, because it's on that Arrow box set. One of the greatest Shaw Brothers film ever, one of the greatest uh, martial arts film ever. And, of course, which this DVD, uh, this Blu-ray is now fairly rare, because uh, it's out of print, and it's not the best transfer. I think this movie deserves a better transfer, deserves more love than this copy. But if you need a copy of Art Boiled, this is the one to get. And uh, Art Boiled is, uh, yeah, it's again cliche, but it is my favorite John Woo film. And uh, it is an amazing piece of action cinema. Human Lanterns. <laughs> oh man, this is so much fun. This one is ridiculous. It's a mix of horror and kung fu films of uh, of Shaw Brothers kung fu, of course. And it's it's uh, it's amazing. Now getting into some bootlegs. Uh, Strikes of the Tortured Angels. Now this is a woman in prison film from uh, Hong Kong and it's probably the worst one ever made it's not far from it if it isn't but holy shit is it terrible then we have of course Devil Fetus which is a Cat 3 Hong Kong film we're also getting I guess into my Cat 3 collection uh, it's silly it's hilarious it's pretty nasty at points but it's great by the way, these two, I think, got a Error, Error 444 official Blu-ray. It's just too expensive in Canada, so I, I'm happy with my shitty bootlegs. Love you, Trash Palace. Uh, Centipede Horror. It's just like Devil Fetus. It's insane, it's, it's disgusting at points, but it's pretty good. This one's from ZDDV or some shit like that, and that is Human Pork Chop. A Cat 3 from the 90s, and there's a big difference between those two, like, 80s Cat 3 films, and then the 90s Cat 3 films. These got more serious. Prime example of that is The Untold Story, which is one of my favorite films of recent memory. Holy shit, this one is awesome. Then we have this modern, I think it is Chinese, I'm not sure. Mon Mon Monster from Shudder Original. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I buy this for cheap. I like Walmart. So, the Korean Witchboard double disc. Uh, oh, I'll have to. Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. Um, I th it's, well, from the looks of it, it's a paranormal, supernatural kind of a Korean ghost film, probably very traditional. Uh, Probably very similar to Ring and, you know, those traditional J-horror films, so I should maybe watch this one. Cello. Uh, Tartan Video Extreme. Uh, Tartan Asia Extreme. Cello. I haven't seen it yet, but, uh, looks pretty cool. Three Extremes. It's still... It's still sealed. <laughs> I got this at the dollar store, I think, a long while ago. And it's the sequel to Three Extremes. I haven't seen Three Extremes, but uh, I should maybe watch this one tonight. I should probably do so. It's an anthology, and apparently it's... I've heard only good things about it. Now, I'm not sure if I heard only good things about the first one or the second one, but hey. This is one that's not talked about enough. Uh, well, it's probably is. I mean, it's Park Chan-wook, but uh, I don't... And I'm I'm just trembling on this step ladder. Sorry, the, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'll hurt my arm. I don't care. Uh, hand, <laughs> Handmaiden's Tale, um, the Handmaiden. Sorry, Handmaiden's Tale is something completely different that my mother reads. Uh, holy shit! This is an incredible movie, and it's not talked about enough. Now this is a a two 
disc edition, the th theatrical cut and the extended cut, which I'm pretty sure I watched the extended cut. Uh, I watched the uh, theatrical because that extended cut I think is insanely long. It won't say, but it's a Korean drama about you know uh, Korea during the Japanese occupation. It is a very very sexually like it's sexually fueled and uh it's it's amazing it's uh there was a scene in there uh wow then of course you can't talk about pan uh chan park chan Wook. sorry sorry without speaking of old boy old boy now this is also one i need to rewatch. this was also a depression watch in 2020 and i don't remember anything Speaking of depression, <laughs> speaking of something depressing, women chasing the butterfly of death. <sighs> this is Mondo Macabro just hits it out of the park with these obscure yet enthralling beautiful movies. And this was one of my favorite uh, watches from recent years too. It's long, it is pretty long, it's, well, it's not that long, it's almost two hours, and it's poetic, it's slow, it's beautifully shot, the colors, as you can see, very um, similar to, like, um, you know, the Italian giallo in its style and its, pre in it, and its in presentation, but it's incredible. Um, do I really need to say anything about this one? It's amazing. Same thing with this, which inspired a very, uh, re which inspired John Wick a lot. Uh, if you see this and then you watch, uh, I think the third or second John Wick, you'll see a lot of resemblance. And this is one of the best Korean action film ever. Parasite, the Oscar winner. I haven't seen. <laughs> and oh yeah, Laura Gemser. Invaders of the Lost Gold. Now, why is this in my Asian collection? There is a reason why I put this here, but it might be wrong. I thought it was made by a Filipino man, or at least it was shot in the Philippines. There's a reason why, yeah. I don't know why, because usually if it's shot in the Philippines, it doesn't mean it's Filipino. I don't know why I put it there. Speaking of which, Eddie Romero uh, is um, his debut film. It was produced by Eddie Romero. Uh, so yeah, these are the Island of Terror, I think. Brides of Blood. These are 60s grindhouse exploitation classics. And they're so much fun. Uh, yeah, these are fun. Primitives, the only jungle cannibal film from Asia. I think it's from director. Uh, uh, I have trouble. It's in Eastern Asia. It's in Eastern Asia. I don't remember where. I'm so bad. Indonesia. Okay, so this is Indonesian. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty tame compared to the Italian stuff. But it's pretty fun too. Then we have the Twilight People, which I've covered on this channel early on, and probably none of you saw that because it was one of my least viewed videos. So if you want to, you know, give me a, a late Christmas gift, go check that video out. Odd, Odd to Nothing, or again released by Connie. I bought this at Fantasia, and it looked pretty interesting. It's a horror film from Thailand. Taiwan? Thailand. Thailand. Because this is kind of my Thailand collection. Art of the Devil, I've heard some good things, it's from, uh, it was released by Media Blasters, I haven't seen it yet, I'm sorry. Then we have Macabre, which was kind of like uh, Thailand's, oh sorry, for the fingers, Thailand's answer to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's a pretty fun movie. Same with Sick Nurses, this was a pretty cool, pretty violent, pretty gory, very nice, good movie. Next up is my only film from Cambodia, and um, I bought this because my um, my best friend is originally 
from Cambodia and I saw this on Trash Palace and I saw that it was from Cambodia so I was like you know what uh, we don't really hear a lot of about you know Cambodian filmmaking so the fact that it's a horror film from Cambodia from 2004 uh, it got me interested, so I wanted to watch it, and if, um, you know, yeah, you know, also, I know, it's my best friends from there, so. Wanted something from, you know, his country. Uh, Hung Bak, of course, of course you know, is a wonderful film. The Bodyguard and The Bodyguard 2 with Tony Ja. I haven't seen these yet. Of course, The Raid, one of the greatest modern action film it's wonderful. And the same thing for the sequel, which is just as wonderful and takes a completely different, you know, um, uh, like the first one is pure action. And then the Raid 2, you're seeing, you know, uh, a lot more story, a lot of more characters, and it's just as awesome. And of course, the fighting, the gore, the violence is just as amazing. Then we have Fury from Vietnam. And uh, it's pretty good. It's a uh, it's a good one. It's good action. It's uh, it's not the best, but it's uh, it's a pretty good attempt at an action film, and uh, yeah, it does the job well. We are now getting into the Vinegar Syndrome releases, and these, as you can see, it's one of my favorite companies. And uh, as we're speaking, it's the subscriber week sale, and I did order some shit. Uh, first I'll start with the DVDs, they're mostly a Blu-ray releasing label, so these are in their older releases, and uh, yeah, so let's get into it. They had their drive-in collection, which I wish I bought a lot more. Uh, I bought this one because I do have Death Force on VHS, and I tried to watch it, and it's just the, it was really dark, so I'm like, you know what? I, it seems interesting, so I'll buy it again. So this is Death Force and Vampire Hookers. Now, I haven't rewatched them, but uh, Vampire Hookers, how can you not buy a movie with that title? Now, these I've actually seen. Well, I've seen Crypt of the Living Dead. I wanted to see this movie for a while. They had released a limited edition Blu-ray that I never got, but, you know, the Drive-In Collection DVD was cheaper. And it's an interesting... It's a really interesting film. I thought it was going to be an anthology um, film with a title like Crypt of the Dead, but it's not. It's about vampires uh, on a secluded island, and it was really interesting. You know, it's 70s exploitation. I'm pretty sure it's American. Uh, it's a, quite a slow burn, but it's worth a watch. And House of the Living Dead, I haven't seen yet. Now, this was one that I wanted to watch ever since I saw that they released it. I'm pretty sure it's Eddie Romero. No, sorry, Sergio Santiago, which is another legend of uh, of exploitation films. And it's an uh, all-female, kicking-ass, you know, uh, movie. So, probably worth a watch. Sorry, there's construction outside for some reason. Now, this was a weird one. Um, Agfa... Uh, before they were, I guess, their own sub-label, they worked very closely with um, Vinegar Syndrome. And this was directed by Mickey Dolenz, the guy from The Monkees. Just that piqued my curiosity enough to buy it, but apparently not to watch it, because I've had this since it came out, which was 2015. So it's been over, like, what? Uh, six. It's been seven years. I haven't watched this yet. Now this won't. I this one I won't show anything from the back because this is hardcore porn, and it's Prisoners of Paradise. This is Nazi exploit. Uh, so it's basically a Nazi exploitation that was like you know what full on pornography, and it stars of course John Holmes and Seika and Jade Wong. But for what it is, because I watched this one, it's a pretty good. Now, this one was covered by Unboxed, Watch, and Reviewed, uh, and I can't show the cover, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an adult film, and it's apparently a very strange one. And this, speaking of strange uh, adult films, this is a collection of strange adult films. Um, 
they're, they don't have the entire... So you have Dr. Sexual and Mr. Hyde. Uh, Hotter Than Hell. Come Deadly. Rites of Uranus. House of the Sad. Mania. And of course, my favorite... The Geek. Which is a Bigfoot, Bigfoot themed adult film. I'll eventually review it on my channel. Now we're getting into these box sets, which the first one I sadly missed out on, and that is Forgotten Gialli 1. Uh, Trauma, The Police Are Blundering in the Dark, which is a good title and a pretty decent movie too. And The Killer is one of 13. Now this one is uh, the box set, so it looks super cool, and it's Girl in Room 2A, which wasn't bad. It, uh, Girl in, yeah, I watched Girl in Room 2A. It's not bad. My Dear Killer, I haven't seen. The French Sex Murders is amazing, and it's with Barbara Boucher, so that's why it's amazing. Then you have the second one, Forgotten Gialli 3. Sorry, the third one. And this one is Autopsy. A murder Mansion, Crazy Desires of a Murderer, which I've seen Crazy Desires of a Murderer, and it's pretty good. All of these come in their individual individual uh, Blu-ray cases, which is pretty cool. Uh, this one is probably my favorite of the bunch, uh, just because it has the sister of Ursula, which is an amazing, incredibly sleazy giallo. And I also watched the, the Killer is Still Among Us, and that was pretty good. It reminded me of that movie about the uh, Zodiac Killer that they made in the 70s that Agfa released. Anyways. Now recently they came out with this, and of course I had to buy it, because now I have to buy all of them, just to not get, you know, screwed over like the first one. And recently I watched Nine Guests for a Crime, and it was pretty solid for a giallo, a pretty solid giallo. Camille Keen in Italy, that was the one I was talking about earlier. Um, Sex of the Witch has the same cover as Belef, Demon of Incest. This is, of course, a box set featuring multiple films that Camille Keen did when she was in Italy. Uh, and I've watched Tragic Ceremony, which was pretty good. Madeleine looks also pretty good. And, of course, Sex of the Witch... Six String Samurai, this was the first 4K I ever bought, and uh, I watched it, and it was decent, not the greatest film of all time, not the worst, it was just, you know, middle of the road, pretty good, the music was pretty badass, the action was good, it's a good little post-apocalyptic, you know, um, rockabilly type of film, very similar in veins as like the Fallout games, which are some of my favorite games, so I definitely did appreciate that. However, it lost me a couple of times there. Now, as the boys from the Sick on Cinema with the podcast would say, hell comes to Frogtown, it fucks. <laughs> it stars uh, a wrestler, which is probably one of the reasons they like it, Roddy Roddy Piper, but it's also just an incredible B-movie and I really need to rewatch it and this cover is amazing. The Cardona Collection, Volume 1. They haven't released a Volume 2 yet. So, the only thing I knew about this director was uh, he made a Jonestown exploitation film, but it's not on this um, on this collection. And I think these are more adventure uh, jungle films, and I know that Cyclone is a natural disaster film, which is not a genre I really am familiar with. Not because I don't like them, it's just, you know, you're, what, when you think of natural disaster film, you think of the blockbusters of recent years that kind of suck. Now this, now this is a fun movie, so now this is a so bad it's good, so bad it's incredible. Action USA is a masterpiece of silly fun. And Champagne and, and Bullets, again, I saw this in a theater. This is also an incredible piece of narcissist, narcissistic, shitty filmmaking, and it's uh, quite fun. Now, Frank Stallone in Savage Harbor. I haven't seen this one yet. Beyond the Door 3. I already talked about this one when I talked about Beyond the Door. Um, wow. 
Blood Beat. Now I love Blood Beat. So Blood Beat was this film ba made uh, by a director that only made Blood Beat. And he basically made this when he was visiting France. And he met a family that he lived with. And I think maybe had a relationship with their daughter. I'm not sure of that. Um, so yeah, he made a movie with just the family that he lived, you know, with uh, in France at their house. So it feels like a fun project uh, made by people who just really liked each other and they had fun doing it. However, he did, because uh, I listened to the commentary, this is how, I, how much I love this movie. I listened to every extra and the commentary too. So what happened is the DOP didn't respect him because, you know, it was his first movie and he wasn't really into movies or directing. He just made it as something to do. So, and he didn't really listen to him. So it was shot in 4x3 because the guy was like, oh, this is just some shitty TV movie. So I'll shoot him in 4 3 But no, this is, was meant to, you know, this was meant to be a regular movie. Blood Games. Oh, I have the VHS of this, which is one of the rarest D VHS that I own, I guess. Um, it's a 90s movie that feels like a 70s exploitation film, and it's amazing, and I love it. Just as much as I love Body Melt. Holy shit. <laughs> this is an... Um, Australian movie about uh, slime and toxic fumes and body melting. It's uh, quite gruesome and it's quite fun. Then we have Jaws on a golf course. And I'm not joking, this is literally what this is. This is Jaws on a golf course. Cthulhu Mansion was directed by the one, the only, the myth, the legend, Juan Piquer Simon. And it's nothing, it has nothing to do with Lovecraft in horror. This is more of a straight up slasher. Creature, I haven't seen yet. I have this since it was released. I haven't seen it yet. It's Dad, Deadly Daphne's Revenge. Demon Wind, Demon Wind with the lenticular cover. I love this. This is an evil dead ripoff and it doesn't try to hide it. And it's awesome. Death Promise, I haven't seen yet. The Dead Comes Home, eh, not the greatest. Now this is one that the boys from the Sick on Cinema podcast, which I refer them to them a lot, they, they hated this movie. I actually thought it was amazing. No, it, it's terrible. It's a terrible, shitty movie, but it's fun. Now there was an era where Vinegar Syndrome released a lot of similar movies. They all had that theme. They were all from the 70s and they were all about, you know, they were all gritty, realistic serial killer movies that were more character studies. And I have to say, that was the highlight, probably, of Vinegar Syndrome for me personally. And Disconnected is a perfect example of that. It is an incredible movie. It's a... Um, it's like a, is it a proto slasher? No, it's from 84. It's a slasher with a lot of balls. It was shot on 16 millimeter. It is gritty. It is pretty violent. Not as violent and gritty as Ebola syndrome though. <laughs> Which again, this is a 4K. Thank you, Vinegar Syndrome for releasing this. This is probably one of my favorite of their releases. And Fade to Black also. This is an amazing, amazing movie. Um, I was on my ass after I watched this because I wasn't expecting much. You know, I heard it was from the 80s, you know, more slasher-esque. So I was expecting this pretty regular 80s slasher. What I got instead was this character study of a maniac that it was just beautiful you know, a kid that's, uh, not a kid, you know, a, an unadjusted adult that's fascinated with cinema. That goes crazy. And then you have Flesh-Eating Mothers, which is fun, but quite the opposite of uh, Fade to Black. Watch this recently, Girls' School Screamers. It's a trauma movie, and uh, it's, uh, I think, from the 
it was directed by the guy who wrote Blades, which you can definitely tell. It's fun, it's fun. The kills are nothing special, but it's fun. The House of the Dead. Uh, this was okay. Now you have Succubuses and you have Incubus. 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 Incubus was an amazing movie and I really need to rewatch it. It is so. Oh, sorry. Unapologetically sleazy. It's great. Another trauma like re release Memorial, Memorial Valley Massacre. It's your. Pretty regular trauma 80s cheesy slasher. It's fun. Mountain Motel Top Mountain Top Motel Massacre is a fun slasher too. Now another highlight from the VS catalog: Night Beast, Don Dollar's Night Beast. We need more Don Dollar on Blu-ray. Give us more Don Dollar. The Pink Ladies, uh, it's what it is. Now, people, people, this is important. Of all the movies I talked about, the one you should really retain and pay attention to is Pets. Just like um, Female Prisoner Scorpion, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I need to do a video about it because this this got respect. Uh, this got the respect it deserved, kind of, when it was released by VS. By the way, this was a complete blind buy. I blind bought this at a convention. I watched this. And not only was I blown away, I fell in love. This is why I love 70s exploitation American cinema because it was it's it I'll do a video about this soon enough nobody will watch it but as long as but I'm gonna feel better about myself if I can share the amazing incredible movie that is pets penitentiary 2 it's a pretty good black exploitation is it black exploitation I guess you can call it that. Uh, 1982, it's a bit late for that. But it's a man in prison film, which I know is different. <laughs> it's different for me. Oh, sorry. Psycho's in Love! Uh, again, the boys from the Sick on Cinema love this one. I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm bad. I've had this for so long. Now, I was talking earlier about gritty serial killer character studies. This is one of them too. This is an amazing movie. I love this one. It's it's I would I would use the word disturbing, but that word is overused and doesn't mean anything anymore. But yeah, that would be a word to describe it. Now this now this is probably the best so bad it's good movie. I think it's my favorite. It's an incredible... I tried to show this to anyone who cares, and it's amazing. Uh, honestly, if you haven't seen Raw Force yet, go do yourself a favor and go watch it. Rest in Pieces, it was okay. Shallow Grave, now this movie again is incredible. It's an 80s movie that feels like 70s exploitation. It's so infuriating, you're really hoping for the characters to be, you know... I won't spoil the movie, but to be released. Shot. I haven't seen this one yet. Shriek of the Mutilated. Mutilated. Ah, uh, this movie is silly good fun. This is this is a perfect example of the fun side of 70s American exploitation films. And this is a perfect example of Canuxploitation. Again, Thankfully, Vinegar Syndrome put this out, or else it would have been forgotten to time, and that would have been sad, because this is an amazing movie, and it was shot not far away from my home. The Suckling. Man, looking back, like, Vinegar Syndrome puts out so many good movies, because every t movie I'm pulling out, I'm like, oh yeah, that movie is incredible. And The Suckling is too. It's about a mutant murdering fetus in an abortion clinic. 
Secta Sinistra. Now this is a Spanish film, so a bit different. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty gruesome. It's uh, it's pretty dark. Uh, I liked it. Terminal Island Rules. It's again a perfect example of 70s American exploitation films. And it was directed by, what's her name? She was a frequent collaborator of Roger Corman. And again, an exploitation film like this, directed by a woman, pretty cool. Uh, Jess Franco, Two Undercover Angels and Kiss Me Monster. Two funky 70s movie. Uh, again, my Jess Franco video, I'll go more into detail. Now you guys know I like cats. I really like cats, and what's better than a movie about a murdering, a murderous mutant cat that goes on a yacht and murders people? It's fun. The Vineyard by James Hong. Um, such an interesting film. This is another one that I watched the special features on, and it is very, very interesting because, um, well, it's a... Uh, film from the 80s made by a, an Asian American from an Asian American perspective with Asian American actors so it was a so I also like about exploitation films especially from the 70s they were ahead of their time nobody talks about them just like this movie Wonder Woman <laughs> this is an all female action movie an all female cast action movie Jennifer Lawrence. It's also pretty fun. <laughs> okay, this one just sucks, but it's fun. Zombie Island Massacre. Uh, people hate this one. I find it fun. Now we're getting to the non slip covered titles and uh, Beyond Evil. This cover is awful. Who greenlit this? Oh, I think I'm. Um. Blood Mania and Point of Terror. I haven't seen Point of Terror yet, but I did watch Blood Mania and it was pretty fun. Uh, Blood Hook sucks ass. If I had the slipcover, I would have sold it. Oh, I'm sorry, my Blu-rays are getting... Blood Suckers from Outer Space. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is so cheesy, but it's so much fun. The Candy Snatchers is, I would say, very similar to Pets, and it's uh, and it's a gritty, gritty seventies exploitation film, and it's incredible. Christmas Evil is also pretty much the uh, most gritty. Uh, Christmas slasher ever made. I love it. It's nasty. It's depressing. It's actually a well put together film. Corruption. Now I only bought this because it has the Easter egg of Last House on Dead End Street, but I did watch the movie, and it's a pretty weird and screwed up porno, and I would highly recommend it to any fan of that genre. The Children. Now, this was one that people were pretty excited about uh, because uh, it got a release. It was uh, out of print from Troma for so long. And uh, yeah, it was worth the wait because holy shit, this is an amazing movie and makes me hate kids even more. Count Dracula's Great Love from... Um... Oh, shit, I forgot his name. Uh, and Paul Nashi, who got a lot of love in like 2019 or 2017, I'm not sure. But this was a pretty good movie. It's a Dracula movie. It's gothic, very atmospheric. Pretty good. Now, who, who bought the rights to Ted V. Michaels movies? <laughs> uh, the Corpse Grinder is fun. It's probably Ted V. Michael's only movie that's worth watching. Okay, maybe I'm too harsh because I've only seen this one, but I've seen some parts of the other ones. And maybe Astro Zombies is worth a watch. The rest, you might want to skip. Cutting Classes. This was, I think, Brad Pitt's first role. It's a slasher film from the 80s. It's decent, nothing special. This is a Spanish giallo. I haven't seen it yet. 
All right, don't answer the phone again. This is a video nasty, and it's pretty nasty, and it's this character study about a mentally unhinged serial killer. It's great. Kind of similar to Double Exposure, who's it's pretty much the same premise, and it's just as great. Death Row Game Show is some fun-ass 80s cheese. Uh, it's just, it's fun. Death Machines. It's in the same vein as, you know, uh, a lot of uh, So Bad It's Good, and this movie is insane. Now, don't hate me, but I haven't seen Dolomite yet. Evils of the Night is a fun time. It has John Carradine completely wasted and a lot of copious and uh, a lot of titties. The Ice Cream Man is a fun, fun slasher. Sorry, they keep falling. Graduation Day. It's a pretty good slasher. You know, it's trauma again. It's very average as a slasher. I haven't seen Obgoblins yet. I know uh, Urshel will probably make me watch it. Liquid Sky is an amazing piece of um, underground New York queer filmmaking from the 70s. It's quite fascinating. It's very out there, and it's very strange, but holy shit, is it a fascinating watch, and a high, high recommendation from my part. Macabra. I don't remember this one. Madman is, again, just your typical slasher, and about a madman. <laughs> Malibu High, by the way, this woman isn't in this movie. Um, I watch, I, I haven't watched this one yet, sorry. I haven't watched this one yet too, but I think it's one of my earlier releases from Vinegar Syndrome. It came out in 2013, holy shit. Uh, I didn't buy it in 2013, I actually bought it fairly recently. Just because it always caught my attention, Massage Parlor Murders. Linnea Quigley in Murder Weapon and Deadly Embrace. It's two filmed by legendary David Dakota. They were prob probably shot at the same time, and it's just an excuse for Linnea Quigley to take showers. Mausoleum is an amazing um, paranormal 80s, very graphic, very, very nice. Memories of Miss Aggie, of course I talked about this one with uh, the boys from the sick on cinema, and this is again a perfect example of how a porno can actually have a good story, good characters, and be intriguing, however it comes at the cost of the sex scenes because this is not, er this is not erotic at all, it's quite the contrary, it's very depressing. Nightmare Sisters is just fun. David Decoto, a bunch of scream queens getting together, getting naked, having fun. New York Ninja, I haven't seen yet. Psychic Killer is kind of in that vein of very uh, interesting character studies, but with a paranormal twist. Okay, these are just gonna fall. Penitentiary. I'll just go quickly. <laughs> Psycho Cop, Satan's Slave, Psycho Cop 2, great little piece of 90s cinema. Satan's Slave is fun. Spookies is, of course, amazing. Definitely one of the greatest ones they ever release. It's so bad, it's fun. Sugar Cookies is interesting. Star Time is a very good character study, again, about a mentally unhinged person. Trip with the Teacher is a great uh, example, again, of 70s exploitation cinema. And I'd watch the good Bad Flicks video for more details on it. And Witch Trap is, of course, a 80s classic. So that was my... Oh, that was my Vinegar Syndrome collection, from the box sets to the slipcovers to the regular releases. So, welcome back to the new shelf, and this isn't totally a different day and I haven't just woken up. 
So without further ado, let's get into the Shout Slash Scream Factory, a company that I've kind of, you know, I haven't got really anything new from them for a while, just because they've kind of been filling off, falling off. Um, I think the last thing I bought from them was the box set of Friday the 13th. So without further ado, I have these little things that I bought at like a local charity shop basically. They're these uh, Elvira double features, so they're basically um, public domain movies hosted by Elvira. I think this is part of the show she hosted. I'm not sure. I've watched a few. I did watch Frankenstein's Castle of Freak and Count Dracula's Great Love, so the two movies on this. I have the Vinegar Syndrome of this. Uh, yeah, the Elvira commentaries between the like film kind of add something to them they make them a little more fun but these I think are two good movies separately so uh, I'd much rather watch just the straight up movie I didn't grow up with horror hosts right so they're not really nostalgic to me and uh, I don't want to damage the package that's the issue with these metal things right I have to I usually put something to protect them I guess I forgot for this one then we have The Doomsday Machine and Werewolf of Washington. I haven't seen any of these yet. Uh, then we have Legacy of Blood and Satan uh, and the Devil's Wedding Night. Again, I haven't watched these two there. I'll just re-put this one in. Then we have these four packs from Scream Factory, which are actually pretty good. You know, that was back when Scream Factory was killing it. What's the matter with Ellen, the Vagrant, the Godsend, and the Outing? Uh, oh boy, did I watch any of these? I've had this for so long. Now, I I pride myself on watching, uh, on having watched most of my collection, but these multi-packs, I, I, I don't know. However, this one, I did watch The Dungeon Master and Cellar Dweller, and they're both... Oh, sorry, the little bur burp. I think all of these four are part of like the Empire Picture era of uh, Charles Ban, and they're pretty good. I like the Dungeon Master, and I did really like uh, Cellar Dweller. Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours. Now, Visiting Hours is a Canadian slasher film that uh, is a kind of a classic, but I, of course, I haven't seen it yet. And <laughs> but I did watch Bad Dreams, which is this pretty. Pretty neat, pretty okay, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff. Then these are fun, the four movie marathon sci-fi. Arena is kick-ass, Elimin Eliminators is pretty fun. America 3000 has to be my favorite. It's about like this world where um, men are commodities because, I don't know, I think women have found a way to reproduce themselves and men are rare, but they're... they're it's a great, fun, uh, 80s, very cheesy, but very fun movie. I think this is, like, one of the few movies I have gave a 10 out of 10 on my IMDb. I need to rewatch it, because I haven't rewatched it in so long. And I'm sorry for the sniveling. Like I said, I just woke up. Then four action-packed. Now, Alienator was uh, done by the RLM boys. Uh, Cyclone, I haven't seen. Eyes of the Tiger, I haven't seen. And Exterminator 2 is the only one I think I've seen, and it's not great. Then we have an ultimate action pack. Now, I got this, like, HMV back in the day. And for the price, I couldn't say no. You have Death Wish 2, Missing in Action, Cyborg, Invasion USA, Missing in Action 2, uh, Badak, Exterminator 2, Ninja 3, Domination. Now, these are pretty good, because they're the transfer from, you know... The, the typical Shout Factory DVD, so the transfer are better than whatever you get if you got them, I don't know, on like a Mill Creek uh, multi-pack. But uh, I've seen Exterminator 2, Ninja 3 Domination, I've seen Invasion USA, uh, and I've seen Missing in Action. I'm not a big fan of these 80s American um, action film. Now we're getting in one of my favorite thing that Shout ever did, and that is the Roger Corman cult classic line. I have a few of these, and I wish I had more, but at this point I think they're hard to find. They're still pretty cheap. I think you can get the nurse one on Amazon.ca for like, shit, 20 bucks. But the first one is of course the Jack Hill 
well, at least two of the movies are directed by Jack Hill. You have The Big Bird Cage, The Big Doll House, and Women in Cages. Now, these represent more fun, more cheesy, more uh, entertaining uh, women in prison film, except for Women in Cages, but the, uh, the Jack Hill ones are notorious for being just uh, pure parodies and comedies based on the genre uh, the, instead of being straight-up women in prison film. They're probably amongst the most well done and the most entertaining. However, they're not as sleazy, and I like my sleaze. Uh, but yeah, even even if I prefer my sleazy women in prison film, I have to admit that these those are probably two of the best. Plus, you know, Pam Greer and shit. Tracy Lord and Not of This Earth. Now, this is an interesting backstory. I think this was a dare be between the director and Roger Corman, which the director was uh, Jim Wynowski. And he was like, yo, I can remake your film from the 50s in like less time than you did and on less money. And Roger Corman was like, bet. And then he accomplished it. Plus, this was when Tracy Lords uh, was coming out of, uh, getting out of the porn industry. Uh, she does get naked, which is good. Uh, and it's a good movie. Piranha! Piranha is a goddamn classic. And no, I haven't upgraded it. And no, I won't, because that... I'm not into 4Ks yet, I don't even have a player, and uh, I like my little DVD of Piranha. Now, of course, I have. Uh, I can't really add anything about Piranha, I think we all know about Piranha and how kick-ass it is. Now, this is Monster, which is the, um, the alternate title to... Okay, James Horner made the, uh, made this goddamn soundtrack. Um... What's it called originally? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's that movie where sea monsters rape women to reproduce. And again, this is one of my favorite movies from this line. I love this one. Now, I'm not much into sci-fi. Uh, this was fun, but not my favorite. And then we have Def Sport and Battle Truck, which were made kind of to... Um, uh, you know, because um, Death Race 2000 was a, a big hit. So, uh, I've seen Death Sport with David Carradine. It ain't great. I haven't seen Battle Truck yet. Now we're getting into the DVDs. And we'll be back with the Roger Cormans pretty soon. I just wanted my slip covers first. And Scream Factory, the Vincent Price Collection 2. I need more of these. I just miss out on them, and now they are out of print, and they're pretty expensive. This one has The Raven, which is great. The Last Man on Earth, which is great. The Committee of Terrors, I haven't seen. Dr. Fibes Rises Again, I have on VHS. I've seen it a long time ago. The Tomb of Lygia, which is pretty good. The Return of the Fly, which kicks ass. And House on Haunted Hill. That's, of course, a goddamn classic and i love that movie and all of these look really good did a good job for the transfers 10 to midnight that's for jacking off uh man i love 10 to midnight with charles bronson uh holy shit what can i say about this movie it's sleazy it's dark it's pretty out there and it's uh, it's great it's a great piece of what the 80s were uh, a great demonstration of what 80s filmmaking was like assault on precinct 13 by roger um, not roger corman god damn it john carpenter this one is a bona fide classic this is one of the first um scream factory video um scream factory blu-ray i ever got uh it's pretty kick-ass this is one of the few of the Scream Factories I've actually showed my parents when I was like a teenager and they thought it was okay. Another one of my first Scream Factory. Now this is was this was when I was first getting into boutique labels and these were some of my first. I think this was like the second one after uh, Assault on Precinct 13 or I might have even bought them at the same time. Now this is easily one of my favorite uh, slashers of all time. The effects are amazing. The characters are actually fun. And when they die, you feel something. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun-ass slasher. Not as good as this one, which 
is again amongst probably my top five, if not my top three, and if not my top one. Uh, my Bloody Valentine rules. I have the poster there signed by the director. This is a, an incredible piece of slasher filmmaking. Class of 1984. Oh shit, it's the class of 1984. That's pretty good. My favorite of the dead films. This is of course A Day of the Dead by George A. Romero. And need I say anything? Dolls. Dolls. Dolls by Stuart Gordon. Dolls has to be one of the funnest film ever made. Uh, I love this one. It's childlike wonder and just great performances and just great concept. Great animation. Man, did fucking full moon fall off. Prince of Darkness, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, one of their um, recent, more recent Hammer uh, films releases. It's pretty good. <clears throat> I think it, it it it's very similar to a lot of these Christopher Lee Dracula films. Mind you, I haven't seen a ton. Uh, I've basically only seen this one and like the Jess Franco one and I think two other Ammer ones and then that I have on like a box set, uh, not a box set, but they're the, these multi-DVD cases. Um, yeah, they're fun. I didn't grow up with them, so like personally I don't find them that incredible. Uh, Drag Me to Hell, this is one of my... Um, one of the horror films that got me into this, this was released in 2007, this was when I was f first, I think in 2007 I was uh, 11, so that makes sense, that was when I started my horror journey, and this Planet Terror, um, um, yeah, this and Planet Terror basically kicked kicked off this entire thing, then I started researching horror movies, the greats, you know, the classics, then I got into the 80s, then I got into the 70s, blah blah blah, and the rest is history. The editor, now this was a US exclusive, because um, it got released by um, uh, Raven Banner in Canada. I kind of don't like Raven Banner as a company, so I was like, eh. Even though it's the same release, I'll spare the extra cash for the American Scream Factory one. Plus, this cover, this original cover, kind of kicks ass. Kind of, it's kind of great. Um, this is Astron 6, obviously a Canadian group of directors that made a few films together. They've recently split off and, and started making their own stuff. But the editor is this throwback to Giallo. It's incredible. It's more of a parody, but it's not as annoying as uh, other like self-aware parodies. It's really good. Escape from New York, of course, uh, classic with with uh, Snake Plissken in New York. Pretty cool, dystopian post-apocalyptic, which uh, New York was always shit. So. I kind of, I guess we're kind of living in Escape from New York time. Hell Night. Ah, uh, shit, man. I haven't seen this one in so long. I remember it, liking it, but not being amazing. Of course, it's with Linda Blair, and the time she was trying to, um, you know, change her image out of this little girl from The Exorcist. Uh, I like Hell Night. Uh, I think that the other film she did to shed off her little girl persona was uh, Savage Streets, which I think was a much better film, but then again, I'm just a sleazeball. Motel Hell is another one of those um, that I originally got when I first started collecting. A lot of the Scream Factory titles were the original, like, were where, where I started collecting, just because back in the day in Canada... Uh, you basically only add them. Uh, Severin was had started. You could get some Severin. Of course, Blue Underground and those types of films, which a lot of those Blue Underground titles that I showed were actually like first parts of my collection. Um, 
It was Blue Underground, Scream Factory were the easiest ones to get that weren't too expensive. And then, you know, of course, Vinegar Syndrome started popping off and then Severin Films and then Arrow came to, you know, the States and Canada. Uh, but then I got a region free Blu-ray player so I could import them, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, all of this to say Scream Factory fell off. Uh, Man Max, the first one. Uh, classic Australian film. I'm not the biggest fan of all of these, uh, the original, the sequels. Not the greatest fan, not the biggest fan. Night of the Creeps. Now, this is one I'm a big fan of, starring, of course, the wonderful mustached, uh, <laughs> beautiful man, um, Jesus Christ, Tom Atkins, of course, from Halloween 3. This is just a fun Fun, great movie. I love it. John Carpenter, more Darden Carp Carpenter. Of course, Scream Factory basically released his entire catalog. Uh, yeah. I need to rewatch this. I think I wasn't feeling well. Pumpkinhead is another one I've had for so long that I haven't rewatched, just like Motel Hell. I really need to get back into these. Uh, it's a fun movie. Now we're getting into what is probably that. I always switch between this one and My Bloody Valentine for what is my favorite slasher of all time. Sleepaway Camp just kicks fucking ass. And whenever it got announced originally, that's when I was paying attention to releases and stuff like that. And I was so excited because I had never seen it. All I knew it was the Anchor Bay DVD was out of print. And then when I first watched this, I had an epithemy. An epithemy? 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 Methamphetamine? I don't know. I just fell in love with this film and this franchise. The second one is so fun too. And the third one, kind of shit, but kind of fun too. Speaking of some of my favorite films of all time, Vice Squad. Holy shit, this is a sleazy, great time. Uh, one of the greatest film of the 80s. You know, fuck a, bre fuck a be breakfast club. I'm Vice Squad Gang. And that would have been more believable if I didn't squeal. Uh -huh. Oh. Dennis Hopper in The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, what can I say about The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2? Well, it's a comedy, it's not scary, but it's fun. Now, this, of course, is a classic. I switched to the, uh, I guess, uh, Japanese cover, the alternative cover. I just think that this poster encapsulate the movie so much like so well i love this cover and i love this movie galaxy of terror nah not a big fan star crash fox uh it's directed by luigi cozy of course starring goddamn caroline monroe which i've met kind of in horrorama and she told stories of these this she was excited to, to, you know, do a sci-fi film, kind of a Star Wars ripoff. Well, not kind of, this is a Star Wars ripoff. And then, you know, she came in and she saw her costume design and was like, Ah, oh, okay, I get it now. Uh, yeah, she's, uh... Her costume designs in this film, let's just say, are very interesting. Interesting choices from Luigi Cozy. Blackula and Scream, Blackula, Scream. Now, these movies are such, like, incredible movies. Now, these are, of course, classic bl black exploitation films, uh, being, of course, just Dracula, but black. Well, it's not just that, but I mean, it's Dracula in the hood dealing with issues, social issues that have to do with that, and uh, it's they're, they're great movies. And uh, Scream, Blackula, Scream, and Blackula were some that I've seen a lot of, in like those trailer grindhouse compilation. Now I should sell this because uh, this is um, out of print, I guess, and it's going for actual like crazy money. And in my opinion, Ghoulies One is one of the worst film ever made, and Ghoulies Two is slightly more fun. But I'm ready to part with this Blu-ray if it gets me movies that I actually want to see. Uh, yeah, Ghoulies suck ass. <laughs> Metamorphosis and Beyond Darkness, now not to be confused with Beyond the Darkness uh, by Joe D'Amato. These are Italian films, of course. Uh, they're not in my Italian collection because Scream Factory. 
Uh, yeah. Beyond the Darkness is Claudio Fergasso, and I think the Metamorphosis is, um, might also be Fergasso. Yeah, these, I haven't seen both. I've seen Beyond the Darkness, I think, or, Met I've seen one of these, and they're not great. Metamorphosis, yeah, I've seen Metamorphosis, and it's, it's terrible. Uh, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror, two great anthology films from the 70s, the golden era of anthology films, in my opinion. And uh, we're kind of living a second golden era of anthology film right now, uh, but these are fun, these are good. Terror Vision and the Video Dead, of course. Being a Moods fan, whenever I got into collecting, these two were... The Video Dead was a big deal. I think it was stuck in VHS Obscurity. Then Terror Vision. Personally, I was I bought this for the Video Dead because Moods kept selling it. I didn't like it. However, Terror Vision easily became... Uh, Wow, this was the uh, Terror Vision I've seen so many times. I love that one. The House Where Evil Dwells and Ghost Warrior. I've only seen The House Where Evil Dwells. These are like American Japanese films. They're kind of strange. They're about Japanese culture and everything, but start like white actors going to Japan. Maybe not Ghost Warrior. Ghost Warrior actually looks Japanese, so I should maybe watch that instead, because Elsewhere Evil Dwells was uh, not great. Now I bought this for Vampire's Kiss. I don't care about Ice Spirits. I'll probably never watch it. Uh, however, Vampire's Kiss, amazing Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage film. 8mm... Uh, of course, this one is incredible and gets a high praise from me. You guys know I have a fascination with snuff films and films about snuff films. And this one is fucking great. I love this one. April Fool's Day. I've had this since last Christmas, I think. Or maybe even the Christmas before. And I haven't seen it. Classic 90s. I haven't seen it. Danger Diabolique, of course, by Mario Bava. Um, this one's fun. It's kind of like this mix of uh, James Bond and sci-fi. It's, it's a weird, weird one, but it's a fun one. Sorry, guys, I kind of choked there and I drank some water. Evil Speak. This one is a video nasty starring Ron Howard, I think one of the Howards. Uh, it's... Uh, I've seen it only once. And I don't really remember. I, I Oh, I remember, you know, the computer thing. Eh. Exterminators of the Year 3000. This was, of course, supposed to be a... And fa famously, this was supposed to be a double features with Cruel Jaws. And then, you know, Scream Factory were like, Wait, this is a copyright shit show. And then they didn't release it. And then Severin came out years later... And they didn't learn their lesson, and, you know, Severin almost got taken down by the Bruno Mattei. Exterminators of the Year 3000 is another one of these Italian Man Max ripoffs that might be more entertaining than the actual first Man Max film. Might be? Controversial opinion. This one's great. Final Exam has to be one of the most boring slasher slasher. Like, slasher-esque slasher, I've seen this only once and almost fell asleep. However, it is a product of its time, because there's a prank that the uh, frat boys do, where they pretend to shoot up the school. That probably aged very well. Uh, Gunwoman with Asami. Uh, this... It's a very low-budget Japanese action film. And it's, uh, it's fun. But it's not the greatest. Not my favorite film starring uh, Asami. Let's just say that. Now this one, i it's probably my most recent Scream Factory purchase. And it's this film. I don't know why. Uh, I think because it was like under $20 at Sunrise Records. And I was like, holy shit, there's a Bootsik label under $20. I'll snatch that just for fun. It's this ghost film with these old actors. It might be really good. 
but it's probably not as good as the house that dripped blood a is this hammer or amicus i think this is hammer anyways it's one of those british companies <laughs> uh and it's great. That's a fun ass one. It's another one I need to rewatch. In the Mouth of Madness um, by John Carpenter. I don't know why this one doesn't get a lot of love. Like most of later 90s Carpenter things. But I fucking love this one. I This was an amazing discovery for me. Um... It's intense. It's it's fucking great, man. The Incredible Melting Man. Uh, this is 70s B-movie fun. Nothing to write home about. New Year's Evil is mid-AF. Night of the Comets. Now this was back in the Cool Duder era. And he defended this movie a lot. And... Even though, you know, Cool Duder is Cool Duder, he was right on this one. This is, a, again, one of the best horror films from the 80s. The Nest is also a wonderful piece of B-movie trash that not a lot of people talk about. I think this one is also Canadian. It's an amazing film, guys. I don't know if this is still in print, but if you can find it somewhere, buy it. Because this is one of those creatures attack. And the title is made out of cockroaches. And there's this giant cockroaches attacking this woman. This woman isn't in the movie. This cockroach, is, this cockroach isn't in the movie. This is one of the best poster to sell. One of the greatest animals attack B movie. Nosferatu the Vampire. Of course the Warner Herzog remake of the 1920s classic. This movie is fucking great. It's a slow one, a uh, slow burn, wouldn't describe it like enough. It's really slow, but it's incredible. It has one of the OG Goff GF uh, with Isabella Ajdani. Ad 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 uh, Klaus Kinski, of course, does a great job because he's an insane man. Night of the Demons, again, one that I heard uh, Moods talk a lot about back in the day. Uh, it's it's good. It's, a, it's, a, it's good. Ninja 3, the Domination. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> Ninja 3 fucks. Yeah, I'll just say it. Q, the Wing Serpent. Of course, the only movie I think that starts with a Q in my collection. Um, his name, <laughs> its name is Quetzalcoatl. Just call it Q. Yeah. A classic Larry Cohen. Classic uh, throwback to... Uh, to uh, Is it Larry Cohen? Yeah, okay. I, I'm never sure if I'm mistaken it with the, the singer guy. Um, this is classic Larry Cohen. This is fun. Now, this is one not a lot of people talk about. I think this was originally a TV film, maybe? Probably not. I'm getting my shit mixed up. I've talked a lot. Um, yeah, I think the only other people, person that I know of that loves this film is Jonathan Doe, because he has a poster in his room. Um, this movie's amazing. Uh, it's honestly one of the uh, great, like, a great 70s film that not enough people talk about. It's from 1971. Uh, it's PG-13, back when that meant something. I don't know, it's it's an incredible movie. It's really hard to de to describe. I might have to do a video about it. Nobody will care, because my video about, like, good 70s movie. So nobody cares, but hey. The Summer Party Massacre, of course, a classic. Another one, fun 80s uh, slasher. Rolling Thunder. Fucks, I have nothing else to say about it. Sorry. Rolling Thunder is an incredible film. Now, this is one of my favorite proto-slashers. Uh, uh, this is The Town That Dreaded Sundown. And it got a remake, which, surprisingly, the remake was uh, pretty cool. It had a good concept. It was good. It wasn't meta. It wasn't cheesy. That's how you make a fucking remake. Uh, the original one, however, is, in my opinion, obviously, it's better. Uh, this is a pseudo-documentary slash proto-slasher. 
it created a lot of things that you'd see later on in horror films. You know, the masked killer, the mystery, uh, the ambiguous ending, because, uh, you know, they never actually caught the killer of Texarkana. Plus, it's based on a real story, and you can actually look up the real story. Of course, this a lot of this was changed for, you know, sensationalism and Hollywood. But, uh, no, it's it's a true, like, it's a fucking wonderful movie. I haven't seen The Evictors yet, which is a bonus film that comes with this. I should, because, honestly, Town that, Town that Dreaded Sundown, I think I I own this also on VHS. That's just how, how, how much I love this movie. And I would maybe question a 4K if it ever gets one. I'd be surprised, because this, I'm pretty sure, was shot on 16mm. Um, not sure if they say... If it's a 4K transfer, no, I don't think Scream Factory ever did that, but hey. They live, of course. Um, John Carpenter's Vampire, I haven't seen yet. I heard it's not great. And Women's Prison Massacre, which I have on DVD too. It's with Laura Gemser, of course. It's very sleazy. It's not directed by Gilbert Russell. It's Bruno Mattei, but I guess they had to write that there. Now we are getting into the European cinema, and I used to have this split in like Euro Trash and European. That made no sense. Who am I to say what's Euro Trash and what's... Plus, I don't really like the term Euro Trash, because let's be honest, the Europeans during the era of exploitation were making some of the better exploitation films. Um, but hey, speaking of that, Jean Rollin. This has four movies by Rollin himself. We have Requiem of a Vampire, The mm -hmm of the Vampire, Shiver of the Vampire, and The Nude Vampire. I've talked in length about Jean Rollin and why I love him in multiple occasions, but most importantly in a video I did just about his uh, movies. So go watch that. This is a pretty beat up box set, but this is a British horror quadruple feature. Um, now, this is a collection of Pete Walker films, uh, Frightmare, which uh, I've made a... Re oh, shit, I just remembered. I did make a review about this one. House of Whipcord, which is a British woman in prison film. Uh, the Flesh and Blood Show, which fucks. Uh, Die Screaming Marion, which is a great film starring the beautiful... What's her name? What's her name? Susan George from Straw Dogs. Uh, yeah, Die Screaming Marion is a wonderful film. <clears throat> now we have the Euro Sleaze box, which is uh, a box set that Severin released. Um, it has Anna D, the girl from Vandal Park, which I think is the only one that hasn't got a Blu ray release yet, or a release, sorry, in any other format than the DVD. Of course, we have The Sinful Dwarf and The Sister of Ursula, which I I have now on that Scream Factor, um, on that Vinegar Syndrome Forgotten Giallo box set. Um, I keep this box set because I don't have The Sinful Dwarf on Blu-ray, and I also don't have Anna D on Blu-ray because it never got released. This is a cool box set um, uh, to have. Uh, I've recommended this box set previously. I know uh, uh, I, I, met, uh, I met a guy... Uh, became a friend of for horror rama and he was i made i i made him buy this i hope he doesn't regret it <clears throat> man was a doctor so like i think he's too smart but you never know <laughs> then of course of course of course my beautiful my lovely mm, just franco films which is now the director I own the mo most movies from. I think I have 25. I fucking love. I love my Jess Franco. Uh, 99 Women. Now, I won't go into too much depth. Because, again, I'm working on a video about all of these. Uh, not all of these now. I kind of changed that. 99 Women. Uh, one of the original uh, trendsetters for women in prison film of the 70s. Virginie, the story into her journey, uh, the journey of the story of her journey into perversion is, of course, a wonderful, wonderful, sleazy piece of trash. 
Ergini Desar with Solandan Miranda and Paul Mueller. God damn, do I need that? Do I need to say more? It's Soledad Miranda. <coughs> you see her name, you buy the goddamn movie. That's just how it goes. The Awful Dr. Orloff, Eyes Without a Face, and basically Jess Franco made his entire career out of that film. Daughters... <coughs> Sorry guys, I, I just woke up. Daughter of Dracula, uh, I haven't seen this one, this is the more most recent one I've purchased. Uh, Angel of Death, a terrible film. Love Letters of a Portuguese Nun. Mmm, it's it's a good yeah, this one. Uh, this one gets you going. <laughs> Jack the Ripper with Klaus Kinski. A pretty pretty good one, honestly. Ilsa, the Wicked Warden, of course, the unofficial sequel to Ilsa. Um, yeah, this, obviously it's great. A Fear in the Tropics, one of the most not well-known, what's the opposite of well-known one, of the more obscure one. Since this didn't get, you know, a release, this is from a bootleg company. Uh, I get why this doesn't have an official release, holy shit, it's bad. Count Dracula, one of the most, um, one of the truest, uh, adaptation of Dracula. Oh. Diamonds of Kilimanjaro has to be his worst film, and this honestly has to be one of the worst releases I own. This release is so buggy, so glitchy. There are scenes that play without sound or just with music and then play again with the sound but without the music. It's awful. She Killed an Ecstasy. Oh man, I fucking love this one. This is one of my favorites. This is such a great fucking movie. Buy it. Buy it. It's super cheap now and you still get this awesome two disc collector's edition. These were also some of the first, these two were the first Jess Franco films that I ever bought. So you can blame Severin for where I've gone in my life. Um, Vampiros Lesbos, of course, Solendan Miranda. Oh, holy shit. Faceless, which, uh, Faceless is, it's, it's incredible. Again, it's one of my favorite. This one doesn't have... Soleda Miranda, but it has another Jess Franco muse, which was uh, Brigitte Lahaye, and uh, whew. Franco Noir, so these are film noirs made by Franco. You have Death Whistles, The Blues, and Rififi in the City. Uh, I've seen Death Whistles, The Blues, and it's pretty good. I haven't seen Rififi in the City yet. And these aren't going to be movies that I cover in my Franco video just because, uh, I don't know, they, they kind of feel out of place compared to everything else. Which is movies like The Hot Nights of Linda. Which is, a bit, ooh, yep, it's a good one. Now I've watched this one for my video, but I, I, I didn't review it because I, I was slightly drunk and now I forgot most of it. But from what I remember it was pretty entertaining. Bloody Moon, of course, this is probably Jess Franco's most well-known film, because it's an 80s slasher. Night Has a Thousand Desires. Now, this is one of the obscure one. This is one... Sorry, guys, I'm gonna jump on the bed. This is one that he made when he first returned to Spain, and it's pretty good. Exorcism is surprisingly also very good. This is a very low-budget one. And it includes uh, an alternate version without the sex, so what's the point? Now this is obviously a like fetish BDSM one. A throwback to, you know, uh, Marquis de Sade, which was a big inspiration for Franco. The Diabolical Dr. Z, which is basically the awful Dr. Orloff, but with a Z. Neurosis is a... <laughs> A sequel to The Awful Dr. Orloff, made 15 years later. It's awful. Uh, now we're getting into the Rollin part of the collection, which is uh, just this, and plus, of course, the box set. 
we have this old ass redemption release so this was when like the style is completely different from what they do now and it's also 18 because it wasn't the same line so i have two 18s uh and they're both from relin which is nice uh and the first one is of course fascination the Living Dead Girl, which I haven't seen yet for some reason. By the way, Fascination is great. Two Orphan Vampires, which is another one I haven't seen yet. Um, <clears throat> Night of the Hunted, uh, which I just got for Christmas. The Escapees, which I haven't seen. Oh, sorry, I've seen The Living Dead Girl. I've recommended it in my video. I got it confused with The Escapees. I'm sorry. The Living Dead Girl rules. It's amazing. It's the escapees I haven't seen. Grapes of Death is one of the most like easier easier Franco um, Rollin film to get into. It's pretty good. Dracula's fiance is one that he made in the two thousand the two thousands with Brigitte Lahaye, and it includes a film that he made in the 90s, uh, Lost in New York, which from that documentary about Rollin, they actually say it's one of his better one from the late in his career, so I might check that one out pretty soon, plus it's it's basically a short film. I am joined by a friend. Yes. Let's hope she doesn't get jealous, because she tends to get jealous sometimes when I talk to the camera by myself. Uh, <laughs> We have Don't Deliver Us From Evil. This is a French film recently. It had got... Yeah, it did get a Blu-ray release recently. Um, this movie is so wrong on so many levels. Yet it is fascinating. It's a f it's an amazing one. I'd uh, highly recommend it. Pretty underrated. Not really talked about too much. But that's, you know, most of the Mondo Macabro title. You know, they... They, they're they discovered basically once uh, Mondo takes it, uh, releases them. You have, again, a French film, Night of Death. I haven't seen this one yet. It was highly recommended to me by the man at the synapse table. And why would the man at the synapse table lie to me to sell more of his products? That would be an absurd, absurd statement. But actually... Ever since I posted my update, which this one was featured in, it got, uh, you know, comments were like, yeah, this is a, uh, this is a good one. Orgoff the Mad Mutilator. Now, this is a French release, because this hasn't gotten a um, legit um, North American release. Obviously, you can see by the, the PAL sticker in the Region 2. Um... And for some reason, these these French releases, I'm not sure if it's just this company, uh, that bear company, I don't know, Artist Film, but uh, the, the titles are 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 wrong. Why why are the titles this this side? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, this is in French, but I threw it with the French ones. This is uh, from Belgium. Uh, which I maybe shouldn't do this because you know the French and the uh, and the Belge don't know if they like each other. But by a man bites dog, or uh, the, the 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 title "C'est arrivé près de chez vous" uh, is uh, one of the greatest films of all time. Uh, this is a masterpiece in faux snuff, faux documentary. This is executed so perfectly. Uh, the main character that plays uh, this guy, which I don't remember his name, is a legend. Holy shit, does he do an incredible job. Uh, yeah, Man Bites Dog. Now, this has popped up on many of these, like, super disturbing um, lists. Surprising it didn't, go the, it didn't, uh, it didn't get to that uh, disturbing iceberg meme. Uh, I would hope so, because at least that, you know, the positive was that a lot of these films were discovered. However, the person that made that was too uh, stupid and put uh, fucking MD Pope instead in it. Whatever. Man Bites Dog is a masterpiece. Go watch it. It's actually disturbing in what, in the, the sense of the wor word, the true sense of the word. Uh, Baise Moi. I haven't seen it yet. It's a rape revenge film. Oh shit, I said the word. 
This video is gonna be demonetized, which sucks, because it's four hours long. I would have made at least three three dollars from it. High tension? One day rental. Where did I buy this? Where the fuck? It has many stickers. I bought this at my local charity shop, which is hilarious, because the movie's all going to, like, base... Uh, the money from that charity shop is basically all do going to, to our local church. Which is, you know... <laughs> Anyways. Frontière, I've made an entire video out of. I love it. It was my first experience with that French extreme new wave movement. Eden Lake, I haven't seen it yet. Irreversible, of course, the Gaspar Noé film. Uh, I'd say is best. Personally, this is my favorite. Um, it's effective on so many levels. It's great. Enter the Void, again, this is an next blockbuster rental. Ooh la la, um, nostalgia. Um, I never had blockbusters around. I live in Canada and French-Canadian town of a thousand people. Of course I never had a fucking blockbuster around. I have youth-restricted viewing. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, I haven't seen this movie yet. This is how I discovered Gaspar Noé. Because uh, Vice made a documentary, whatever, about him. Uh, I was just put off by the runtime, which is uh, 161 minutes. That's... Uh, that's 2 hours is 120. That's almost 3 hours. Which isn't that bad, because I've watched Antiporno, which is literally 4 hours. Um, the Female Executioner with Brigitte Laye. This was a really fun little action film from the 80s from France. Climax. Um, yes, I paid $20 for this. I hate those fucking stickers on um, on these slipcovers. Um, it was pretty good. Not my favorite from him. I much prefer his later one. His, uh, one of his latest one, which was Lux Eterna. That movie was pretty good. Plus, it was really short. Uh, this is a French film again, Cat Fight. I haven't seen this one. I've had it for a while. I got it at a cell, an Aero Video cell. Uh, I thought this was older than it was. It's Honneur Tuquel. Speaking of French, because we're still in my French section, by the way. Uh, La Bête, um, which is famously known for that horse scene. I haven't seen this yet. I haven't seen this one yet, either. It's uh, La Grande Bouffe. Uh, par uh, Marco Ferreri. Um, not sure if this is French or Italian. I might uh, the language French. Okay, uh, this is a French film. Of course, La Grande Bouffe is French. I should know. I'm French. Vivre sa vie. Um, this is this is a great one. Um, Jean Luc Godard, obviously. Uh, whew. This is, this is the first movie from Godard I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, I get it now. It's great. This was a recommendation by my friend who lived in France for like six, six months. And she took uh, film classes. Now obviously they talked about Godard. Because they kind of have to. She was in France, for fuck's sakes. It's kind of their cultural heritage. La Ain. I haven't seen this one yet. It's uh, a movie about uh, the very real and very big racism problem in France. Uh, surprise, surprise. People know racism isn't just, you know, an American thing. There, it, It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So stop fucking saying that Americans are racist. Especially you, the French. La Chinoise by Jean-Luc Godard, obviously. I haven't seen this one yet. Bitter Moon, a Roman Polanski film. I'll keep my comments to myself. Farewell Friend. Uh, this was one I watched fairly depressed. Um, it's Charles Bronson. It's French. From what I remember, it was pretty good. But, you know, need to rewatch it because all of those movies... That I watched during 2020, I need to rewatch because holy shit, was I not in the mood for movies? 
baby blood. Now this is pure, pure trash, and I'm all there for it. Holy shit, this movie's fun. Um, that's fucking great. Anyways, this is an inc incredible film. This is such a weird Kino release. Like, I expect this kind of trash from Vinegar Syndrome. Or MVD, because Nathalie, Nata Nathalie Escape from Hell. Now this, uh, I haven't seen yet. I was very curious. It's by, uh, it's produced by Euro Cine, who produced a lot of, um, Franco and, uh, Rollin films. Um, it's a Nazi exploitation made by the French. Oh, this, okay, so now we're getting into the British section, obviously. Now this is the one I was talking about. Uh, I've seen out of all of these, I don't remember which run, which one. I uh, I was definitely curious about Dracula AD 1972. You know, a, a a Dracula in the modern age, but I think I've seen Horror of Dracula, which was pretty good. The Devils, of course. This um, this is kind of a gray market bootleg, like a very well done bootleg. This cover kind of fucks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can I say about the Devils? That haven't that hasn't been said already. This is one of the greatest films of all time. It's a shame that you can't really get it anywhere. But, uh, yep, yeah, that's... That's... Yep. Yeah. Then you have Scum, released by Kino. Uh, this cover is shit. But the movie is fucking amazing yeah this is whew, uh, an, an important british film then we have a bootleg here jack L this 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 is seven murders for scotland yard uh yeah it's in their giallo cinema collection but it's it, it's it's not british oh oh i'm dumb it's with Paul Nashie. This is supposed to be with my... This is supposed to be with my Spanish collection, which is later on. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet anyways, so I can't see. Circus of Fear with Klaus Kinski and Christopher Lee was an actual very, very um, pleasant surprise. It's not the greatest film ever made. It's uh, kind of standard, but it was pretty fun. Yeah, Not as fun as Shockwaves. Shockwaves, fucks. With Peter Cushing, Brooke Adams, John Carradine. Uh, yeah, this this is a good one. The Blu-ray of the Hammer Horror Collection. This has Brides of Dracula, which I've seen. Curse of the Werewolf, which I haven't. Night Creatures, The Phantom of the Opera. Rules. Paranoia Paranoiac was okay. Uh, Nightmare was okay. The Evil Frankenstein was pretty good. Uh, so a thing about me, one of my favorite classic horror film is Phantom of the Opera, which I know is surprising because that's a musical. Anyways, so anytime I can get my hands on a um, an adaptation of Phantom of the uh, Fan Phantom of the Opera, I try to. So this one, out of, <laughs> I'm gonna rate this one a. Um, Three out of five on the uh, Phantom of the Opera scale. Unlike this movie, which is pretty much a five out of five. Holy shit, this is folk horror at its best. Uh, I love this film. This is the film that I watched when I had COVID and it still ruled. Eh, I wasn't the biggest fan of this one. Unlike Corruption, which rules, Peter Cushion plays a psycho serial murderer holy shit this is different for peter cushion and i'm all there for it this is such a sleazy film i'm surprised it's great frightmare of course pete walker i've talked about this in a video it's a it's a great cannibal film from britain no not a jungle cannibal film this is another pete walker film that i haven't seen it's home before midnight from what i understand this isn't a horror film this is more of a slice of life um, you know, the music business must be very exciting to a teenager, so basically this teenage girl falls in love with a rock star or some shit like that. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Killer's Moon is one of the trashiest uh, British horror films from the 70s. 
It's fucking weird. Virgin Witch, I haven't seen. House on Straw Hill, I've made an entire video about it. You probably don't know because nobody saw that video, but uh, it's a great video. <laughs> it's an even better film. The House of Seven Corpses, from what I remember, it's slow, it's dry, but I like it because I like slow and dry. Of course, we have the Monty Python films, though I really need to go into details about them. Uh, big influence on me, on my... Whoa, they're falling again. The Long Good Friday, a great classic gangster Brit British gangster film. Now we're getting into some German, some the German. We have Mark of the Devil 2. I've talked about the first one, I need to talk about this one. We have Christina F., which is... Uh, I discovered this through uh, horrible reviews. We have Run, Nola, Run, which is one of the most exciting action films ever from Germany. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Now I had the pleasure to see this and Nosferatu played live uh, with live music and it fucks. It's a great movie. Then we have, of course, my Jorg Budgerite corner, which I'm missing. Der Totskin. I really hope to one day get that one. Necromantic. These are the cult epics one. I actually got at HMV, which was funny. Um, Necromantic 2, which rules. Schramm. Beautiful release. Great movie. These are all movies that I'm going to cover eventually, because due to the nature of my channel, I kind of have to. Uh, but Schramm is great, and I'm one of those weird guys, you know, that prefers Necromantic 2 to the first one. And I know, it's so much fucking longer. It's it's long for nothing, but I really... There's something about this one that I, that I just prefer, man. I don't know. And there's a lot of padding. The story is that uh, Jörg Budgerait didn't want to do a sequel, so he was like, yo, fuck it. And he made, like, a, a very, like, padded movie. Mark of the Devil is another one I covered on my channel. You should go watch that video. It's incredible. N no, not, not the video. I'm not that egotistical. But the movie is incredible, and it's one that kind of influenced the underground a lot, uh, and it kind of... You know, the types of... Uh, it would influence the type of 70s sleaze that would come uh, later on in the 70s. Succubus, I haven't seen yet. Again, I just saw this screenshot in the back of the girl getting milk shot in her mouth. And I was like, I need to watch this. Der Fan, uh, Mondo again. Mondo just does such a great job coming out with these fairly obscure, but uh, fairly well just great films. Um, what can I say about Der Fan? It's an incredible critique of fandom and how uh, mental illness plays a big fan of, uh, you know, and obsession with celebrities and celebrity culture. I feel like this is close to Perfect Blue, which I watched yesterday, and it's still so fucking awesome. I need to rewatch this. The music kicks ass. Now, funnily enough, somebody asked me about this yesterday. Singapore Sling. Yes, I will cover it in the future. Uh, just like, not this one, but this one rules. This one is really fun. I was, I don't get it why it has like a three point something on IMDb. It's just a fun movie. Island of Death is another one that I'll eventually cover. One of the most notorious Vido Nasties, and it's a Greek film. So these are like my three Greek films. Now we're getting into Spain. Paul Nashi, Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll. Holy shit, this movie rules. Uh, it's basically a Spanish giallo. It follows a lot of the same beat. Of course, it has a similar title to a lot of giallo. It's great. Horror Rises from the Tomb is also... A great Paul Nashi film. These are old ass DVDs. I'm pretty sure these two got like released in that Scream Factory um, Paul Nashi box set. However, I have none of those because they're out of print and way too expensive. The Blood Spattered Bride, which is another one that you saw a lot in those uh, trailer compilation 
This is the infamous trailer where uh, the guy goes crazy out of the, the theater. Uh, it's um, It was a trailer for the double feature, The Blood Spattered Bride and I Dismembered Mama. Which I don't have, I Dismembered Mama, but whatever. This is basically another one of these Spanish Giallo. This was also one of the first movies I ever got when I started collecting. Which I've seen it then and I don't really remember. Coat Throats 9 is one of the nastiest Spanish westerns and it has Joshua with Fred Williamson. Cannibal Man I haven't seen yet. So I was curious and I looked at the runtime of this video and it's three hours. So if you're still here, thank you. I don't think anybody will get to the end of this video. But hey, if you do make it, you're a real one. Anyways, we're continuing on our Spanish adventure. And we have Paul Nashi in Orgy of the Living Dead, which I haven't seen yet. Um, again, Paul Nashi has, uh, has been uh, in uh, a lot of interesting films, especially from Spain. You know, a lot of uh, uh, Spanish giallos, which are, 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 uh, are good. Most of the ones I've watched are, are pretty pretty entertaining. Now, this is Nazi exploitation from Spain, and this this one's okay. It's far from my favorite. I think you can't outbeat the Italian in uh, Nazi exploitation sleaze just because, you know, they're the Italians. Same thing for Fraulins in uniform. You know, it's, it's a decent one. However, this one, Mad Foxes. Now, this isn't a Nazi exploitation one. It's just one of the most insane out of this world mad movie ever created i think my favorite review of this is on the podcast show me something wrong which i think was their first episode this movie is utterly insane like it's oh, it's trash uh bullet paste and completely in in dense indefensible mad foxes is truly one of the most absurd trash epics ever made. I agree with this statement a hundred percent. What the Peeper Saw. Now this is a pretty interesting film. Um, yeah, this is a film from the 70s from Spain and it's uh, it's pretty good. It's uh, quite a slow burn. Kind of more of a thriller than a straight horror movie but it's still pretty good. In My Skin. Uh, this is one that came up a lot during that old uh, disturbing movie movement. I'm not talking about the recent one, but I mean like the horrible review OG movement on YouTube. Uh, I haven't seen that one yet. This one either. This is like a Shutter exclusive. As you can see, I just found it in Walmart. Thought it looked cool. Uh, so yeah, I bought it. Now this is The Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. This is like the, the, the slipcover and... The still book, which is kind of a weird concept, because the still you're hiding the still book with the slipcover, and I paid way too much for this, um, because it was like double the price of just the regular ass Blu-ray at the uh, at the synapse table. But you know, if if I made good financial decisions, I wouldn't be collecting these. I'd be collecting, you know, the standard horror movies that you can find for $2 at, like, a thrift store. Pieces! Yeah, Pieces is one of the greatest slashers ever made. One Piquetta Simone's masterpiece. I love Pieces. If you haven't seen Pieces, what is wrong with you? Then we have a recent purchase, Blood Hunt. I haven't seen it yet. It's from Severin Films. It is, I think it's a Spanish action film. Now again, from Juan Piquier Simon, we have Slugs, which is also an amazing piece of trash. Hunting Ground is this very interesting kind of drama mixed with revenge film. Uh, it's quite impressive. Again, Mondo Macabro, great job releasing these. Dark Waters is probably uh my favorite film with none with nuns that's not school of the holy beast uh and I'm not even sure if they're really nuns this is a very lovecraftian epic it's it's an incredible film highly recommended uh i discovered this through a severin seller witch hammer 
uh, I think this kickstarted the whole like witch, uh, witch films from um, whatever that came later. Um, films like you know uh, Mark of the Devil that I just talked about. This is a film from uh, the Czech. It says Czech. It says Czech. I don't know when this came out. If is if it if it was still Czechoslovakia or if Czech was independent. Whatever, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Sweet movie. Yep. <laughs> I, I, um, I adore this film, but it's, uh, it's tough to talk about. This is my only Polish film. It's Wilitska. It's a vampire film from Poland. I haven't seen it yet. Now this is uh, a Turkish film, this is The Last House in Hist Istanbul, also known as, um, you know, Turkish House uh, on the left, Last House on the left. Um, I haven't seen it yet, it's not subtitled, so fuck, I don't know. I plan on doing a video about like, um, Last House on the uh, the left ripoffs, so I'll watch it for that. Valérie and her weeks and her week of wonders. I haven't seen this one yet. Heard a lot. Same thing. I know I'm terrible. I haven't seen Possession yet. Of course, this one is talked about a lot. It's a lot of people's like favorite. V. I was kind of underwhelmed by. This is like a a, a, um, a Soviet film actually. Uh, it's like this old folk tale of. of uh, I should rewatch it. I was a bit tired when I first saw this one. Now Santa Sangre. Now this is a this is a movie I can I can talk about this movie rules. It's incredible. Uh, Helendo Jaradowski's of course. Uh, this one is probably his closest one that's actually like a, a more horror centric film. Uh, he's not very, it's not he gets slumped in with horror just because you know anything that people don't really understand is like lumped into horror you know it's the same thing as you know uh, david lynch's her earlier work like it's not really horror but it's already adjacent and you know anything that people don't understand that's horror but the, my favorite from jaradowski at least from the ones i saw these are the only two jaradowski film i have i don't have el topo or anything but i want to see them but holy mountain is um it's it's a masterpiece of cinema. Uh, the first time I watched this, I was in college, I think. I fell on my ass and I watched this three times in a single week, and uh, I loved them. I loved it after every watch. Alejandro Jaradowski's masterpiece, probably. Then we're getting into the Canadian stuff, and what's the best representation of Canadian cinema? It's Ilsa, of course. It's Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, Arim Keeper of the Oil Sheik, and of course the Tigress of Siberia, which was probably the hardest one to find in the Ilsa series. Um, yeah, these are fun, fun, fun movies. Yeah, I don't have a choice to go with the wide angle, this is too tight. Spasm, this is a collection of short film of a from a film festival in Quebec. This is like old, old as fuck. Um, the most well known is probably the Bagman, which I I did cover on my channel. Now we have Ilsa E. Aram, Keeper of the Oil Cheek. So I basically got these before getting that box set, which that box set is was from the Netherlands. Uh, but this one I really wanted to keep because uh, this is my OG copy of Ilsa. She both of the SS, the one I hunted. For so long, and I, I, I bought for, for $30, which was a lot at the time when I bought it, but it was totally worth it. It's the old Anchor Bay, it's uncut, it's great. Bob Clark's Deaf Dream, uh, I haven't seen it yet. Now this is one that doesn't get enough love. Uh, I think Scream Factory released the Blu-ray, I haven't gotten, obviously. It's the little girl who lives down the lane. It has Jodie Foster, Martin Sheen. It's this. It's more of a thriller drama, but it's it's close enough to be horror, and it's quite 
the amazing film. Good Bad Flicks did a did a did an incredible an incredible video exploring this one. Uh, it doesn't get enough love, even for like for Canadian like it's considered can exploitation, but you know it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. This is the Canadian Last House on the Left, aka Death Weekend, and it's it's full uncut collector's edition. This is obviously a bootleg from Twisted Anger, rest in peace. Um, I didn't like this one, it was fucking boring, and nothing happens. It's a Canadian version of Last House on the Left, so it's way too polite. I didn't like it. Uh, Blue Monkey, this got a release by Code Red on Blu-ray. This is the old bootleg I have from a convention. It's basically a VHS rip. Uh, I should get the Blu-ray, because I've heard a lot about this. And apparently the old VHS rips were kind of shit, obviously. Now this was one of my first reviews, and the only comment on that video was it's uh, 1970s or it's 1980s, not 1970s. Yeah, and I, I probably said in the video that it was from the 1970s, but it was made in 1980. So the only comment is that comment. So uh, if you're far, if you're this far in the video, please go comment something nice on that video. <laughs> it's been up for three years, and the only comment is like it's 1980s. <laughs> you know those people that get upset at tiny details. <clears throat> This movie's dog shit. It was so boring. This is... I hate to describe films as boring, because I like a lot of boring films, but this is straight-up garbage. Uh, it's so boring. Queen of Blood, it's actually directed by the man that uh, runs Horrorama here in Canada. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure it stars as a... Yeah, it's uh, it stars as a... Uh, what's her name? Ali Chapel, uh, not it's the, it doesn't star her, but I think she has a role. Anyways, they're the two people that basically run Horrorama, so they're cool. They're cool people. I like them. Siege. I've heard a lot about this from Paul from Grindhouse Fun now, so I haven't seen it yet. Fuck you. <laughs> American Mary, the Saska twins. Uh, this this is one that you know resonates with a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of audience. I thought it was okay. It's an interesting concept. I think it got a lot of um, clout. I guess you can call it for I think being featured in again some of those old ass like uh, disturbing lists. But you know it's it's decent. October. This is a film from Quebec about the um, kidnapping in the seventies in October. Uh, I ran after this film. I was hunting it down for so long uh, because the um, October nineteen seventy and the the crisis during that time is, as a history buff, is one of my favorite parts of Canadian history. This movie's kind of shit, though. It's sad. This is another French Canadian film. Uh, this is one of the few like straight up horror uh, films from Quebec because uh, uh, Quebecois filmmakers are, are kind of very pretentious and they like to pretend that they're better than American filmmakers. So horror isn't really a genre that's explored in Quebec. Uh, so this was one of my first horror films. Also, in during that time, I rented this at a video store. AK convenience store that was close to me when uh, my parents had a condo in Saint Adele. Nobody understood that friend that sentence. Um, Smash Cut with Sasha Gray. I only bought this because Sasha Gray. Uh, this is one of the worst pieces of shit ever, and this was made in my hometown. And I know the director. He runs the fucking awesome theater that plays great movies, but this movie's shit. Uh, more Astron 6, because I, I love those boys. Uh, Manborg, I think this was their first feature length. They had put out short films, but this was their first feature length. It's fun. Summer of 84, I haven't seen yet. It's from the people that brought you Turbo Kid, but they're also the same people that brought you Bagman. Just their careers are doing way better. Uh, the first Ryan Nicholson 
film here. Uh, not the first that I've ever seen. That was Gutter Balls. I also covered that movie. I watched this this uh, not this weekend. This week, I went to my friend's house and we watched a shit ton of movies. This was the, the second one I watched, and I I I was uh, drinking a seven ten milliliter of Colt forty five while I was watching this film. I remember things. I remember the characters being annoying, the sound being shit, but that's just things you have to deal with with a Ryan Nicholson film. However, the special effects were incredible, and it was sleazy, and uh, yeah, it was decent. Uh, Cold 45 tasted like ass, but the movie was pretty good. This is Patrick Fortin, two short films, Infernal Gluttony and Infernal Gluttony 2. I got these for free when I ordered um, Cat Called Omega Violence. I'll get to Dev Valley. No, these aren't real signatures, are they? They might be. Uh, probably. I mean, the guy that ran the table. I don't know. I got this at a convention. I used to collect all of Black Fawn's releases. I kind of stopped because most of the films they were putting out were, were dog shit, let's be honest. Uh, that collection is in the other room. I won't show it. It's not really impressive. Anyways, Brandon Cronenberg. Yes, I put this in the Canadian section because it was financed through a uh, telefilm and uh, it's a uh, Cronenberg's son I haven't seen it yet he's got a new movie coming out with Mia Goff I'm pretty excited excited about that speaking of Cronenberg of course uh, do I really have to talk about these Videodrome rules it's uh I'd say it's probably my favorite of Cronenberg movies that I've seen but uh, you know same thing with They Came From Within, aka Shivers. Pretty cool movie. I've been to a lot of the places where they shot this in Montreal. Same thing with Rabid. I'd say Rabid is probably, in my opinion, and I went to see it in the theater recently, and it's probably better than Shivers. But Shivers has a special place, especially because it has um, Lynn Lowry, which is one of my 70s crushes. Uh, the Void. I love The Void. Now, I was listening to The Moods podcast, and I, I heard, like, the guys weren't big fans. They were kind of saying it was missing something. I f thought this was wonderful. I think they were criticizing the characters, but I thought the characters were pretty good. Anyways, in my opinion, this was one of the best movies whenever this came out. Plus, this was made for, like, 50 grand, 50 grand which is really not a lot when you think about how awesome this movie is anyways turbo kid do i really need to go into details turbo kid rules deranged is actually a pretty interesting film it was one of the first i think that was based on the ed gein case maybe not because it came out the same year as texas chainsaw massacre so i'm not sure which came out first but it's a very interesting uh, pretty pretty nasty piece of exploitation cinema prom night it's a pretty good slasher curtains it's a pretty good slasher that kind of have that kind it kind of has um giallo elements it's a very interesting film and i met some of the actors in horrorama and they discussed about the behind the scene of this um i think the director wanted a more straight up slasher or the producer wanted a straight up slasher and the director wanted something more in kin with um, Italian films of the era. But, you know, so it, it's a weird mix between a very typical American slasher film and an Italian giallo. Now we're getting into the Ryan Nicholson things. Torched, I've made an entire video about. Gutter Balls, I've made an entire video about. I, I, when, the, when I first saw this in, like, shit, 2012, I hated it. Uh, then I rewatched it, and honestly, it grew on me. It, it it grew on me. It knows what it is. Don't expect good characters. Don't expect good dialogue. Don't expect good sound. But for what it is, it's it's pretty fun. Star Vehicle, I thought, was okay. It's not uh, Nicholson's best. This is Patrick Fortin's Cat Call Omega Violence, which I might review. I haven't seen it yet. Then I met this director at Horama about a bunch of his movies. Uh, Nigel Hartwell, I might talk about these one day. Uh, these are strange-ass Blu-rays. Inside of Evil, The Expedition, and Inside of Evil 2. He was selling them uh, individually, but then 
He's like, ah, oh, no, I got these box sets. And this was the most recent of his. And uh, I met one of the actresses that plays in this. And it's it has Felicia Fisher. And those are their signature. The director, Nigel, and uh, that lady. don't remember her name. I'm sorry. I have her on Instagram. Now we're getting into the Australian. Australian films and let's start with Picnic at Hanging Rock which I haven't seen yet but I really want to because it looks like a lovely movie I know you're gonna laugh at me what the fuck why look I have tastes in movies eclectic tastes in movies and yes my Picnic Rock Picnic at Hanging Rock copy is chilling next to Nightmare which by the way this movie rules uh, I bought this while I was in the state last summer Waited for some reason, then I watched it and I was like, why haven't I seen this earlier? This is masterfully crafted horror. I love this. It's very Carpenter-esque and it's a, it's, it's a fun one. Bad Boy Bobby. <laughs> I didn't really like Bad Boy Bobby. The Masturbating Gunman. Eh, it's okay. Cats like Blues, I haven't seen yet. Wolf Creek, it's okay. The Loved Ones, the Loved Ones, it was one that was really hyped up. It's okay, it works, it's better than a lot of the movies that came out during that time, but whatever. Now I know you're saying, this isn't from Australia, Spooky, this is from New Zealand. And I know, I just don't believe in the concept of New Zealand. The Devil's Rock, it's, it's, this is a fun-ass movie. It's uh, basically a throwback to Nazi exploitation, plus with the supernatural elements. I liked it. The Man from Hong Kong by Brian Trenchard Smith. A fun-ass action movie. Road Games uh, with Stacey Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis. Great thriller, more of a thriller than a straight-up slasher. Then we have the Mad Max sequels, The Road Warrior, which is okay. And then Beyond the Thunderdome, which is okay. Then we have Turkey Shoot, that rules. This is one of the my most watched Australian Ozploitation film. I love this one. And for like movie movie, this is probably the, the, the best of the uh, the ones I've shown. Uh, uh, Long Weekend rules. Uh, it's a great commentary about nature and how we mistreat it and how it's gonna turn back on us i love this movie now we're getting into um i don't know socialist countries uh <laughs> igmar bergman for master uh, works it's uh, smiles of a summer night the seventh seal wild strawberries and the virgin spring Basically got this for the Virgin Springs, loved it, and uh, I need to read, watch more of these. Then we have the Dead Snow films from Norwegia. We have Dead Snow, which is one of my childhood favorites. Again, this came out at a very important time in my horror development, 2009. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, got this for $5, $5 reduce, and I liked it. Then my brother got me this for Christmas, which is Dead Snow Red vs. Dead, uh, which is fun. Got this at the dollar store, I haven't seen it yet, I'm a piece of shit, it's let the right one in. Evil Ed slaps harder than, I don't know, uh, my father after a six pack of cores, I already made that joke. Evil Dead rules. The Night Visitor with Max von Sydow is also a fairly good movie. And of course, we have Thriller. Oh, Thriller. I love Thriller. Oh, I fucking love Thriller. Thriller is so amazing. You, everybody needs to watch Thriller. Come on, people. If you haven't seen Thriller, I don't know. This one's out of print now. It's not the best version. I mean, it does, it does do fairly well in... Um, in, uh, in, uh, in bonus features, plus it comes with Thriller the Color One Eye uh, DVD, which is the same DVD that they, um, they, it's the exact same DVD as the DVD version that Synapse did years ago, because I had that, uh, but this is Thriller, a cruel picture, and then you get a DVD. I know, I think, 
Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome release is better, but this was cheaper at the time, plus now it's a collector's item. Now we're getting into what is probably one of my favorite section of my entire collection, that is the exploitation films. So these are a collection of, uh, basically it's all American exploitation films, except for one title or maybe a few. So these are, you know, classic exploitation, 70s to 80s stuff, uh, mainly 70s because that was the golden era of exploitation. Some stuff is from earlier. Uh, like I said, there's no really particular rule. Um, anyways, without further ado, uh, let's go because these are <clears throat> so these uh, so these are evil animal. This is again one of these old Shriek Show box sets. Now these aren't all Americans. There's I think Day of the Animal is uh, clearly Italian. Uh, grizzly or devil dog, another one. One of these is Italian. One of these is not like the other. Don't even know if that's the song. Anyways, they're pretty fun. You know, your typical nature's attack. Now, I've talked to this, uh, I've talked about this film already in this video. Um, this is the French edition of um, Last House on Dead End Street by Neo Publishing. Of course, I've made an entire video on this. This is the first physical media cop copy of this I've ever gotten. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the few ones that wasn't like super expensive. Of course, this was way cheaper than the Barrel Entertainment one, which I was trying to buy when I first got into collecting. But it was like $50 US at the time, which is not something I was ready to spend. I've since spent way more on movies, but hey. This was when I was younger. This was when I was like 18, 19. So I've been doing this for about seven years. So give me some slack. Uh, Roger Corman collection. Now this is a pretty good collection. Honestly, I was surprised. And I got this for so fucking cheap. It's a MGM that put this out. It's Gas, The Trip, The Young Racers, The Wild Angels, Bloody Mama, A Bucket of Blood, which rules by the way. The Premature Burial and X, The Man with X-Ray Eyes. I've since gotten some of these individually. However, I think this is the only way you can get The Trip, which The, thri the, the, the Trip rules. Uh, Wild Angels is fun. Bucket of Blood is great. Bloody Mama and Premature Burial and X are also pretty good movies. Uh, this is one of these cheap ones, but it came with a tin. Now, these are, the, uh, of course, the... Um, uh, public domain ones, uh, so you have the Little Shop of Horrors, which is pretty good, Attack of the Giant Leeches, The Wasp Woman, Creature from Haunted Sea, She Gods of Shark Reef, and Beast of Haunted Caves, and we got one of these old school Mill Creek, the old school Mill Creek logo on this, this is the Savage Cinema Collection, I got this for two dollars, and I was pretty happy about it, um, these are a lot of the, um, oh shit, what were they called? Uh, Crown International Picture movies. So uh, now Vinegar Syndrome has released a lot of their catalog. However, this one has still got a lot of stuff that hasn't been re-released. And this set has been out of print for years because this is from 2010. Um, I think the only one on there that they released was uh, Death Machine. Death Machines and I think they released Death Riders. Maybe that was uh, Agfa, but yeah. These are all like biker movies or exploitation, or 70s exploitation films. Pretty cool set, honestly, pretty happy to find that. Speaking of cool sets, of course, we have the Urschel Gordon Feast, uh, which has a lot of his movies. Scum of the Earth and Blood Feast, which Scum of the Earth and Blood Feast are two classics. The Thousand, 2000 Maniacs, which rules Moonshine Mountain, I haven't seen. Color Me Blood Red, which is pretty good. Something Weird, which I haven't seen. The Gruesome Twosome, A Taste of Blood. She Devils on Wheel. Wheels, just for the hell of it. How to Make a Doll, The Wizard of Gore, which I like, The Wizard of Gore. That Stuff Will Kill You, and The Gore Girl Girls, which is actually a pretty good one for H A for Urshel Gordon Lewis standards. Um, this pretty nice edition of Last House on the Left from uh, Arrow, Canada, 
which was mispriced. So I got this for $7. I was pretty happy about it because it usually goes for like $40. It comes with a little booklet, a poster, and of course the infamous movie by Wes Craven. I won't lie, the the Hills Have Eyes is probably one of my favorite Cra Craven film. I like early Craven. I don't mind a. I don't mind. I well. I really love uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. It's actually one of my favorite of the mainstream uh, slasher franchises. But let's be honest. After the nineteen eighties, Wes Craven eh, more misses than hits. But uh, the Hills Have Eyes and Last House on the Left are two of my favorite films. Uh, two of my favorite exploitation films of all time. And of course, I Drink Your Blood is also up there. If you haven't seen I Drink Your Blood, what are you doing? This has to be one that you watch, like, right now. Stop breathing, stop this video, go watch I Drink Your Blood and come back to it. I think, I'm pretty sure it's on Tubi right now, not an ad. This is, again, such an incredible film, such an incredibly intense um, experience that stays with you. Don't go in the house. Now, this one's from the 80s. Uh, it's so fucked. Oh, man, I love this one. It's honestly one of my favorite of the 80s, like, exploitation films. American Horror Project, uh, Dark Volume 2. I don't have the Volume 1 in this set, but I have every, movies, uh, every movie released in that volu first volume, either on Blu-ray or DVD, you'll see later on. Uh, so this one, Dark August, Dream No Evil, and The Child. I've watched The Child, and The Child was a pretty fun set early 70s exploitation film. Flesh for Frankenstein, of course, that recently got released by Vinegar Syndrome, I think, or uh, Severin. I don't know, this is the old... Uh, oh, can't show that. This is the old Australian release. It's a pretty fun movie. Now, these are fun. The... Um, Duke Mitchell, uh, Gone with the Pope, and of course, which was uh, re-edited, was lost and re-edited by the guys at the, uh, um, at uh, Grindhouse releasing. Then of course we have his masterpiece, what he's known for, Massacre Mafia style. Pretty, pretty fun movie. I haven't seen this one, but this was one of the earlier, um grindhouse releasing releases you can see that by like just the blue regular blu-ray case again i got this in the state i haven't seen it yet it's a it's a psychedelic cult classic now this is the one that's not really american i just I didn't know where to put it it's the coffin joe trilogy i've seen the first one it rules invasion of the blood farmers this movie is so much fun it's it's a great time. This is a sleazy, sleazy 70s holy movie. Uh, I think I think this is the, like, um, softcore cut. I'm pretty sure there is an hardcore cut. I Don't quote me on that. I think it might be, like, a Blu-ray exclusive. Um, wow. This dialogue, just everything is so... Like, you couldn't do any of this in the modern day. And that's why 70s movies rule. Delirium is another video nasty. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Frederick R. Friedel. I've seen Axe. And uh, yeah. It's an interesting film. It's uh, very slow. But it's very short. Um, I really liked it. I, it's hard to describe. But I, I, I really liked it. Night of the Demon. Of course another um, video nasty. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. The Devil Reigns. The Devil's Reign is amazing. Uh, it's very, very underrated. It has William Shatner. Uh, and it does have one of the most incredible endings ever. Drive-In Massacre. It's okay. It's your typical proto-slasher with like gimmicks and shit. Uh, go check out Grindhouse Funhouse review. I pretty much agree with everything he says. That was part of the American Horror Project Volume 1, and this is Malatesta's Carnival of Blood. I've watched this one. I don't remember shit. 
because uh, again, that was 2020. Yay! Uh, so I need to rewatch this. But I like horror movies in uh, circuses and carnivals. Reform School Girls. Now, this is an 80s uh, women in prison film that's uh, really fun, chock full of everything a growing boy needs. Now we are in my little Jack Hill section because uh, I love that man and one of oh and one of my favorite films from him is of course Spider Baby which was one of his first um Spider Baby has to be one of the most wholesomely fun uh um like um horror film of the time uh it's pretty out there for the time but it's so much it's so much fun the I need to rewatch this. I really love, love this film. Um, it's strange. It's strange, but it's so much fun. Foxy Brown. I love Foxy Brown. Who doesn't love Foxy Brown? Foxy Brown rules. Don't worry, coffee is here later on the, during the collection. Switchblade Sisters is so much fun. I love this one. Holy shit. This movie rules. The Swinging Cheerleaders 2 was pretty fun. Uh, Jack Hill just knew how to work the genre. Uh, Black Mama, White Mama, directed by Eddie Romero, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, for um, for AIP, I'm pretty sure. Whatever, it's a fun movie. It's again one of these uh, women in prison, but you actually spend more time uh, with their um, their escape. And it's a really fun movie. I mean, it's got Pam Greer. Do you really need any more reason to buy this? The infamously, the infamous movie written by uh, um, Roger Ebert, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Yeah, he should have stay. He should have wrote more of these instead of going into movie reviews. Um, I'm pretty sure this flopped. Um, I'm not a fan of Roger Ebert, uh, I didn't grow up with him, I think he's kind of a pretentious cunt, uh, but this movie rules, this is one of my favorite of the like, 60s funk, um, uh, funky uh, exploitation films, but Roger Ebert is a cunt. It's hike to hell, eh, 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 it's decent. The witch who came from the sea, now this... Now, this is what 70s weirdness is all about. This is, like, a perfect example of 70s American weirdness and what uh, American exploiters were capable of. This is a fun movie. Premonition was the last piece of the uh, American project, by the way, which came from the sea, was also from that set. Um, I haven't seen this one yet. Or I think, at least, I haven't. The Baby. <sighs> I don't know why I keep showing the back like there's pictures. Arrow doesn't do that uh, for some reason. Um, the Baby. What can you say about The Baby? It's one of the oddest piece of American cinema ever. Uh, and again, it shows you that uh, 70s ruled. Fuck your 80s horror. Give me 70s. Toys are not for children. Again, in the same vein. Very strange one. The Driller Killer. Uh, Abel Ferrara's first non-porno feature-length fil film, I think. I need to rewatch this. I had this on a shitty DVD and I thought it sucked, but the, it was probably cut. The quality was a VHS rip, so uh, I'll watch this one eventually. Of course, Toby Oper's, I think, follow-up to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And uh, it's it's a really fun one. Squirm, of course, squirm, 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 the infamous trailer, uh, directed by Lieberman, of course, who I've recently talked about in my latest update, uh, yeah, I, I love squirm, who doesn't love squirm? Oh, I really need to. Now, this is gonna tickle Urschel's fancy, but this is the old... I'm not sure, Grey Market, probably, the Andy Milligan Grindhouse Experience. Uh, I just bought this for the Ghastly one, because I wanted to get every video nasty uh, of this 72 original. And uh, the Ghastly one was them, one of them. 
I like the ghastly one. Herschel got upset at me because I think I gave it a 4 out of 10 on IMDb. It's a bad movie. It should be something like a 4 out of 10. It's just fun. Now this is one that's not talked about too much, which is also a video nasty. And honestly, if it wasn't for the infamous, the infamy of the video nasties list, nobody would talk about this one. But uh, I liked it. It's in the same vein as a three on a meat hook, which obviously I'll talk about soon. Uh, it's very slow, but the ending is worth it. Fight for your life. I, this is one of... This, again, shows that 70s cinema was ahead of its time. Uh, a lot of people call this movie racist for some fucking reason uh people are dumb okay so this is clearly a movie about the effects of racism in america at the time but you know since most people spend too much time on twitter and rot their brains they're like anything that deals with uh with race relations in the 70s must be racist because back then people were racist no you're just dumb don't talk shit about something you haven't seen and this is one of the most brutal depiction of that fact of a racism of violence that can be caused by racism it's not fucking watered down bullshit made by disney it's not black panther like this is a real deal fuck off uh, again one of these french releases of savage weekend collection horreur us 70 uh it's your average average movie from that time it's okay. I need to rewatch it. It's it's fine. Now I did a I did a review on this, which was weird for my channel, but this is Cop Killer, and it's got an, a Blu-ray release, and it's worth watching because this is a pretty good again, sh showing you uh, '70s exploitation. Now this one I didn't know where to put. It's not Italian. It's I'm pretty sure it's American, or it might be British. I don't know. This movie fucking sucks. Um, Yes, I still only have the I Spit on Your Grave DVD from Anchor Bay. The Blu-ray is on my wish list, but it's right now it's $58. Three on and Meat, Meat Hook was a, a film I was, again, very curious about due to a lot of uh, trailer compilations. And uh, it's okay. Blood Freak is fun, but it's terrible. It's about marijuana that turns you into a killer turkey uh the premise sounds better than the actual movie but it's worth a watch and this was one that i was uh this is one this one's actually one of my holy grails ever since i started collecting i wanted to buy this and i found it i think at a convention or on ebay no it was on ebay for like 20 bucks and i was like yo I've been wanting this movie since I was 17 or 16 or maybe even younger. So, uh, yeah. Werewolves on Wheels. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. The Velvet Vampire. I've seen the Good Bad Flicks uh, um, video on this and was curious. And plus the Cheesy Flicks um, DVD was super cheap. My only issues is that this, since this is the... Obviously, public domain cut. It might be a shitty cut. Blackenstein. I've had this for so long. I haven't watched this. Shaft and Shaft's big score. Shaft rules. I think that is it getting a criterion. We're living in a crazy world. Jim Brown in Slaughter's big ripoff. Yeah, this movie rules. And I got this for like one dollar at a uh, Giant Tiger of all places. Which, for uh, you Americans, Giant Tiger is, is basically like budget Walmart. Yeah, I know. Two-Headed Transplant and The Thing with Two Heads, of course, in the Midnight Movies line of MGM. All I know about these movies is in the, um, in the documentary American Grindhouse, which, again, came out at a time where I was very much in, uh, influential, which was very much influential. They interviewed the writer of the 
two-headed transplant or the thing with two heads. Anyways, it always looked like cheesy fun, and the writer's pretty self-aware. He's like, I wasn't trying to make the great, the next great American screenplay. I was making a movie called The Thing with Two Heads. Roger Corman, again another K Roger Corman collection from a different company. I think this one's a shitty company that's probably out of business. Rock and Roll High School with, of course, The Ramones. Uh, this is a fun-ass movie. Um, if you're like a, a, a classic rock fan, which I'm not, which is why it's strange that I like this movie so much, uh, it's worth a watch. The Teacher Rules. This is one that I got uh, when I was first getting into exploitation films. I got this movie and again, one of these uh, Mill Creek box sets. And this was a great example of what 70s exploitation could be. Uh, I should do a video about it because it's pretty, it, it would work for my channel. Defilers and Scum of the Earth. Uh, Scum of the Earth, again, is the Ursula Gordon Lewis thing and it's pretty good. Now I talked about this earlier, Savage Streets uh, with Linda Blair. It's the edition, uh, not the edition, this is a fucking bootleg. It's uh, the movie with Linda Blair trying to change her persona that's totally worth it. It has, of course, uh, what's that other girl's name? Um, the print is too shit for me. But it's a, it was a scream queen, Linnea, um, was it Linnea Quigley? Anyway, who plays her little sister that gets great. Uh, yep. Stay there, you piece of shit. Sorry. Uh, where was I? Yeah. I got this in uh, for like a buck on that site. Um, oldies.com. I think this is their company. These are public domain 80s things. I'm not sure. I didn't know where to put them. I should watch them because they kind of look like old Italian zombie flicks. Jesus Christ. Oh, shit, I'm pretty sure these are Italian. This one's starring Cameron Mitchell. Anyways, I'll look into them later. I might switch them around. Uh, this is the only movie I got uh, during my trip in Japan. And why did I buy Worm Eaters from Ted V. Michaels? Because DVDs over there were even more expensive. And this was this one was basically... The equivalent of $10, and I wanted a DVD or a Blu-ray from Japan, from a fucking weird movie, so uh, I got my wish uh, came true. Uh, Worm Eaters is one of the few movies I can't finish, it's disgusting. Blood Beach, obviously this is a bootleg, uh, it's an okay movie, I wouldn't mind seeing it again maybe on Blu-ray. Speaking of which, Don't Go In The Basement is one that you find in a lot of uh, public domain collections. However, this one is the one to get, and it does come with Don't Look In The Basement 2, which was a recent, a more recent film, a more recent sequels, which I haven't seen yet. I kind of, um, these movies about, like, mentally challenged people kind of hits, they kind of hit hard. Uh, uh, for me, um, so I'm like I like them, but I can't watch them too much. Linda is in Human Experiments. Uh, I fucking love this one. This is a sleazy '70s exploitation film. Holy shit, is it great? I'm, oh, and this is also a, another video nasties. Savage Sisters is a very fun '70s. Um, woman in prison slash uh, adventure film. Ants, I talked about my recent Blu-ray uh, update. I haven't seen it yet. More of uh, Andy Milligan. The rats are coming. The werewolves are here. Of course, I don't have that big Andy Milligan box set, so I think I picked this up in the States for like 10 bucks. Love Me Deadly. I have this Blu-ray for so long. Daddy is a naked corpse on a slab. This is a movie about necrophilia, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and it's hosted by Maria Candelis, a WWE superstar. Why is it hosted by a WWE superstar? I have no clue. Schoolgirls in Chains, which I recently uh, seen. Uh, this movie rules. 
but again, it deals with a lot of mentally challenged uh, 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 individuals, and that makes me uh, uncomfortable. Anyways, the God's Bloody Acre and So Sad About Gloria. No, this isn't a bootleg with shitty print quality. This is an official release by Dark Force Entertainment. And uh, the transfers are dog shit, but God's Bloody Acre is decent. It's like 5 out of 10. Then we have Coffee. Of course, everybody knows Coffee. Coffee rules. George A. Romero's The Crazies. Uh, I watched this during the pandemic. <laughs> which was ironic it's a good one then we have William Castle these are a bit older uh, they could have fit in in my uh, section for horror like classic before the the 60s uh, before the 70s but I feel like they have a very present like exploitation drive-in kind of feel so that's why they're here homicidal is pretty good and Mr. Sardonicus is pretty good too nothing too amazing but they do the job the image, it's a uh, ultra erotic. I haven't seen it yet. And the creature from Black Lake, uh, I think this was inspired by uh, the legend of Boggy Creek, which I think was done by the same guy that did the town that dreaded sundown. So I'll have to watch those. This is a Bigfoot movie, which I apparently bought a lot of this year. All right, so I didn't know, but apparently the flash shuts off when the phone is too hot. Uh, should have done this on a, my regular camera, but the focus. Uh, anyways, you don't care about that. You all you care about is goddamn five five five, which uh, I don't. I don't. I don't like. I haven't seen in so long. Uh, but I. I don't know. I'll have to rewatch it because it's it's kind of became a bona fide shot on video classic. Uh, these are way too tight. I'm gonna take one out. Um, I think Urschel mentioned this one in his uh, later latest video that he watched this for the first time. I haven't seen it yet. I got this uh, because RLM, strangely enough, said that this was a good shot on video film, which from coming from those guys, that means a lot because they don't usually like these, uh, which is understandable. Uh, Shot on video is a hard one to get into, uh, even for me. There's a lot that I really don't like, and yeah, these are way too tight. I really packed these tight. Uh, this is a bootleg that I got a at a convention. I just really like the cover. It's Satan's Place, a soap opera from hell, and then I turn it around, and there's this looking at me, so I had to buy it. Um... Now, SRS has recently, I think it's been doing this for the past year, these uh, throwback hi-fi, uh, they're basically 90s, early 2000s shot on video films that they started re-releasing. Uh, this is Transgression, the director's cut, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Night, the final cut, I just got this for Christmas, obviously I haven't seen it yet. Uh, gut Pile, I've, I've seen, it's not great. This is an old-ass DVD, but holy shit, it's not great. Now, this one got me in trouble with the Sick on Cinema Boys and also Urschel, because uh, I got I gave this a 4 out of 10. Now, the first time I watched this, I loved it. Um, but last, I think, two years ago, so maybe that was the issue, maybe it was in 2020 during my, my bad phase, I wanted to see lots of gore. You know, I wanted to see German splatter at its finest, which this is what it is. It's great for, you know, it's great. It's a great splatter film. However, I really didn't like the wraparound. I thought it was went on for way too long. Uh, even the two segments, I think, go on for way too long. Uh, it, it went from a 7 to a 4. If I rewatch re it, I might like it more. I'm not sure yet, I'll have to rewatch it again, but obviously the, the, the effects are wonderful, it's uh, Olaf Ittenbach, uh, yeah, and he's of course a master in shot on video horror and shot on video splatter. Uh, this one is uh, one that I got fairly recently, it's called Blood, Ray, uh, Blood Lake, it's a collab between Agfa and... Uh, Bleeding Skull Video, who are known for their, their zines, and they've recently... God damn it, I'm having difficulty right now. 
they recently put out a book, which I own, which I've started reading. Uh, yeah, it's from the 80s, and it's a shot on video film I haven't seen yet. Now, of course, we can't talk about shot on video without talking about violent shit. Now, I did review the first one. The first violent shit is, as the titles say, pure shit. Um, but I did watch the second one. And uh, I'll watch the entire series, except the fourth one, based on uh, the Second Cinema podcast. Uh, yeah, the second one kicked ass, and I, from what they say, the third one kicks even more ass, which I'm pretty excited about. Plus, this sets this set comes with uh, Zombie ninety. Anthropophagus 2000 from the director of Violent Shit, Andrea Schnass. Now, this is a remake of Anthropophagus, the Joe Diamato film. It's not as good, obviously. It's shot on video from the 90s, uh, but it does have its charm. And I did almost review this. I just, I think I, I never edited it. Some videos of mine do get scrapped for multiple reasons, and this was one of the first that I scrapped. But I should revisit it and maybe do a review. Slaughter. It was banned in the UK. Uh, I've never watched Slaughter. The, 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 the line is kind of curious. line between violence and pornography is... Uh, is erased. I don't know. I'll see about that. Uh, LA AIDS Jabber, which is again one I recently got, and yes, my cat did have a fun time chewing the box. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Streets of Death, I made an entire video about this. This is actually one of my most viewed videos in the last few months. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, YouTube didn't like the ass in the thumbnail, but it's a pretty fun movie, and you should go watch that, uh that review now we're getting into some uh saturn's core which is a sub label and they release a lot of uh, the wave productions uh which uh, this is one of them psycho sisters i haven't seen it yet i did watch the documentary about wave production and it looked pretty gosh and fun fun uh, savage harvest by eric stanzi uh who would later on do some infamous, I think, uh, kind of uh, uh, August Underground inspired film. Uh, this one's pretty cool, honestly. It's one of the few like '90s movie about the indigenous um, traditions and like in indigenous legends. It's, uh, it's it's pretty fun. It suffers from a lot of the same issues with a lot of, of shot on video films. Like it's way too fucking long for its own good, but um, it's it's fun. Dead North is another wave one. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. It looks amazing. And we have Burglar from Hell, which I think is a uh, Todd Sheets. Not sure. Phil Ehrman, sorry, it's Phil Ehrman, uh, another legend in SOV horror from America. And then we have Fuck the Devil 1 and Fuck the Devil 2, which I've seen recently, and oh boy, these are terrible. But they're so much fun. They're so much fun, they're awful, but they do only, um, they're only 30 minutes each. So, for that, I applaud the director for knowing when to stop. Uh, but, but there are recuts there, the originals are, are even longer, and I think they feel even longer from what I heard. Uh, my little Dustin May Mills corner, we have Puppet, the Puppet Monster Massacre, which I think was his first um, feature-length film. It's uh, it's good, it's fun, it's a really fun, uh, very impressive uh, effects in this, and uh, you know, the puppet work, it's fun. We have Easter Casket, which suffers from a lot of uh, sound issues. Um... But it is extremely fun, and the quotes on this, I fucking quit by the Pope and needs more more boy ass, uh, quoted by the Catholic Church. Uh, yeah, this, this is a fun one. And then he started doing these more experimental films, and under the label Crumple Shack, and her name was Torment, is an amazing, 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 um 
film. It's extremely... Oh, boy, there's titties on the... God damn it, fucking... <laughs> uh, yeah, I should cover this one. It's right up there for my channel. Snuff It. I know Urschel hates this one. Uh, I like it. Um, it's August Underground with puppets, but entertaining. The message is nailed in your head. Uh, it's really not subtle at all. Night of the Can Tentacles is uh, is another Dustin Wade Mills. It's it's very fun. The effects are so impressive. Uh, the work, the thing he accomplishes on his budget, it's incredible. Uh, I need to get more of his films. They're just hard to get because he's in the U.S. and it's expensive to import. Blah 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 blah. You guys know the deal. I've complained about that so many times. Uh, now my little Bills Above corner, which are all movies that I got at Horrorama, because the guy was like selling them for basically like a hey, three Bills Above movies for ten bucks, and I'm like, oh shit, I can't say no to that. All the cost cannibal. I haven't seen it. Dick Shark, which is, which is, oh god, god damn it, Bill. Uh, where's the running time? Where's the two hours and twenty four minutes? Why, Bill? Mister Zabub, why? And Farm Dickle, cause uh, yep, that's a, that's a title. Uh, forgive me. I haven't seen any of these, by the way. Uh, Wild I Re uh, Wild Eye release Gorgasm got this last Christmas. I haven't seen it yet. The guy that actually uh, a guy that worked on this, not the director, but somebody that worked on this, commented on that video. And I'm sorry, dude, I haven't reviewed this yet. I just got a lot of things to review. The Halfway House is such a fun ass movie, and it's really impressive what they've been, uh, what they accomplished on that budget. And it's sleazy, it's chock full of nudity, it's great. Uh, all Allows Eve and All Allows Eve Two, which were the predecessor, predecessor, um, basically the movies that created uh, Art the Clown, which would later on become a sensation. And uh, yeah, these are anthology films uh, based around Halloween. They're pretty fun. I like them both. I think I like the second one slightly better. Now for indie um, Halloween theme films, this one is incredible. I really like the the barn. I discovered this this year. Uh, yeah, and I should. I can't wait to get my copy. Well, my copy. I haven't ordered it because I. Don't know if I can, being in this country, of The Barn Part 2. Uh, this is, in again, another one of these SRS. There is just not shot on video. I don't know why they released this under this line. Because this was made in 2021, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's just some Chuck Connery. I think I follow him on Instagram and I wanted to support his work. So I got this through SRS. Um, we don't have to talk about this one. Uh, I'm probably going to sell it. Probably not going to make the money I spent on this. Uh, but um, yeah, I own it. Anyone wants it, it fucking sucks. <laughs> Kitty Killers. I got this at like a close, uh, like the final, the last video store close to my house. Got it for five bucks. Everything was like 60% off. Um, it looks like trash, like pure trash. Uh, it looks really indie. Don't know who directed it because uh, sticker blocks everything. It's distributed by SRS, which is their probably one of their first because... There's another name. I don't know. This is an old DVD. I think this is from 2001. 2006. Okay, sorry. But the film, I think, is from 2001. So this is an odd part of the collection. Same thing with the original House of the Damned, which for a while I couldn't find on, on IMDb. And the reviews are written in fucking Times... Um, not Comic Sans. Or some shit 
text like that. It's really weird. Why is this image so stretched? It's directed by somebody. A Sean Weathers film. I have no idea what this is. I don't know why it's the original. What happened to the... the uh, did it get a remake? Is this a, a sequel? A prequel to something? I have no clue. Uh, there's not even a company in the... Oh, fuck, man. I don't know. It was in that video store I was talking about earlier. Though. The ENG uh, Erotic Grotesque Nonsense Trilogy. Of course, I've reviewed all of these. Uh, Barf Bunny, which is still my favorite, I think. The Degenerates, which is uh, kind of like August Underground, but good. Uh, and Defilement of a Porcelain Doll, which was really good. Uh, I kind of regret my review because I was really tired at the time. Uh, I really like this one, except it's way too long, please. Then we have Jack Mulvarnardi's, of course, Doll Fluids, um, which was a pretty popular video. Uh, if you want to learn about this film, go watch that video. It's pretty un it's a, it's a, it's a short film from the underground. It's pretty nasty. Uh, the Rope Maiden by a uh, guy, guy. Oh shit! What the fuck is his name? He does that. Show me something wrong podcast. Uh, he's got a new film coming up. I reviewed this guy Pierce, guy S. Pierce. Um. Sculpting Fragments. He was also on YouTube. He was one of the OG, like, uh, extreme cinema channel collectible. I don't know. Uh, his channel is pretty kick-ass. He's got some great shit on VHS. And he lives in Japan. Which is why this should maybe be in my Japanese section. But I put it in indie because he's a British man in Japan. I don't know. I just love this movie. And he's got a new one coming out. I don't remember exactly the title. But it title is amazing this film is one of the holy shit does this stay with you and holy shit don't be claustrophobic if you're claustrophobic don't watch this movie if you're um whatever that mental illness is called when you can't leave your house don't don't watch this movie this is about that it's fucking creepy man i love this one then our american woman is a film by romeo lambert uh this is signed I'm not sure if it's actual signature or this just came like that from a massacre video uh it's from director of nurse nurse jill which i've covered on this channel which uh oh which was my video that i released on halloween so none of you watched it it's okay flowers by uh, phil stevens i haven't seen it yet it's the old school dvd three disc limited edition from unearthed Speaking of unearthed films, A Hundred Tears by Marcus Cook. This is a fun-ass movie. This is a fun time. This I love this movie. It sounds like shit, but it's just such an incredibly fun movie. The gore is great, obviously. It's Marcus Cook. Uh, but yeah, this is fun. Cult Epics, The Cinema of Death. These are a bunch of very indie, old kind of old one of them's from the two from 2005 but the rest is from i think 60s to 2000 2000s uh yeah it's a bunch of short films about death from the underground i love cult epics i wish they released more shit uh can't rant here anymore ryan meads uh ryan meads was a guy that was uh promoting a lot of his stuff on uh Facebook groups back in the day. Uh, I haven't seen this one. This is a comedy in the veins of Clerks. But I did watch his movie, Invaluable, uh, which is a documentary about Tom Sullivan, the uh, artist uh, behind a lot of the um, the art in Evil Dead. Uh, so this is basically an amateur documentary about the making of Evil Dead and how Tom Sullivan did a lot and he's not really well known for it um it's a good documentary i really liked it it's one of these uh, very amateuristic documentary but it's 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 worth a watch if you're an evil dead fan i am it's coming up pretty soon but he did sign it and he did also sign because he had special editions of evil dead um so uh, yep yeah, sorry uh, you'll see that later on in this video 
A Flash for the Inferno, uh, this was recommended by Moods, it's um, directed by Richard Griffin, who's another uh, indie American director, and uh, yeah, this this is a pretty fun, this is kind of like a, th very similar to Dark Waters, as in it's a film about nuns, and it's very dark, uh, but it's fun. Not my favorite, the sounds, this is so common in indie films, uh, the sound is dog shit, but what can you do about it? Yeah, you, I mean, filmmakers could get better audio equipment, but whatever. whatever, whatever. Um, I'm a cycle. This is one I got at a convention recently. I don't know. It's been... I haven't seen it. Uh, it's a throwback uh, to, like, exploitation films. It might have that shitty film filter, but uh, hey, we, may, we never know. It might be good. Uh, yeah, this uh, is an incredible film that's not talked about enough. Uh, I think Ryan Allingston made a video on YouTube. Uh, it's by Andrew Getty, who was a um, son of a uh, oil tycoon. Uh, and he, uh, he was also very much into methamphetamine, uh, but he really wanted to make a film. So he made a film. Uh, I don't think he financed it through his father's company, which was weird because, you know, you're an oil tycoon. Um, but he died. He died, I think, right after this film came out, or during the filming of this film. So this was his passion project, and it feels like it. It is one of the most creative, creative-ass fucking, um, horror movies, especially for, for, for the budget, you know. It's slow budget, but it's not, like, no budget. Uh, I think it was made for, like, a million which in this category of my films, yes, it's a lot, because none of the previous films were made for a million. Um, but uh, to me, it has that indie edge, uh, and it's really fucking good. The acting is not the greatest. Um, I think this was the first role from Frederick Kohler, which kind of became a well-known actor. And uh, yeah, no, it's really good. It's really cheap, too. You should get it, honestly. It's a nightmare Logic, uh, the cinema snob things, uh, nudies, rudies, and crudies. Yeah, it's, I used to like the cinema snob, I don't really anymore. The, his movie was okay, I think it's a great, it's a, not great, it's a good little throwback to, um, to Giallo's, which was surprising, coming from him. Um, Crossbearer, uh, yeah, this movie's pretty good. Uh, from Adam Albrandt, who kind of disappeared. This was my first experience with... Oh, tits, goddammit. Fuck it. Of course, there's tits in the back. It's a German release. Um, yeah, this was my first experience with Adam Albrandt, and uh, it's uh, it's a good one. It's, it's, it's Again, terrible sound. <laughs> Fucking hell, guys. Uh, Portraits of Andrea Palmer. I have talked about this in so much... Uh, length at this point i think i've made one video about it i'm it was on the sick on cinema podcast talking about it i made an instagram post about it i've talked about it when, whenever i have the chance i love this movie this is easily one of my favorite films of all time not just you know exploitation or not just indie plus it sounds good it's all dubbed but it does sound better uh, Amazon Hotbox from this company, which I, uh, I, I saw was Canadian, um, Dark Side, sorry guys, you can't see shit due to the light, Dark Side releasing, and they've released a bunch of these, like, super low budget throwback to 70s exploitation films, and obviously this was a, um, this is a throwback to Hashtag Woman in Prison, I just saw that, that's disgusting, and I think it's signed by the director and one of the actress, uh, it stars... Uh, what's her name? Uh, she's a she's a S and M girl. I don't know. This it's a lot of nudity and it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a pretty sexy movie. W N U F season special Halloween special. What can I say about this? This movie rules. Nurse Jill. I've talked about this. It's a silent movie shot on sixteen millimeter. It's pretty fucking good. Now we're getting into my Sam Hell collection, which is uh, pretty large at this point. Not as big as some other people, but I don't really like double dipping, so that's why. Uh, Love Dump. The cover I should censor, whatever. I... fuck. Uh, <laughs> all of these are pretty... Um, Vania. 
It's uh, signed by um, the actress. I wish I could show you, but I can't. Is this one okay? Yeah, this one's okay, I guess. Flesh Eater X. Uh, signed by Kaya Eve, Wolf Iron Bear, and Rebecca Vanguard, which are all lovely ladies that do uh, adult stuff that I might or might not watch often. Uh, Green Hell with Felicia Fisher. Now this is one I'm going to review fairly soon because it's kind of a throwback to Forced Entry and it has Felicia Fisher. This is the Baroque House Collection. Um, uh, Art Gore, Green Hell, Vania, Exploration of Sin, Suck My Blood and Love Dump. Now I did double dip a lot. But this cover by Silas Massoff and all of Silas's work on these uh, it's incredible. Did he do this one? Did he do this one? It doesn't look like his art style. No, he didn't do this one. Um, but yeah. Uh, Silas is honestly, and I've said that to him, or I said that in a video, he's one of the reasons why I bought so many of the Sam Hill films, just because his covers are incredible. Uh, let's stop at the morgue, signed by the cast, which again I think is Rebecca Vanguard. Did Rebecca Vanguard sign this one? Um, <clears throat> have you re I've reviewed this. This is more in the veins of a, a straight up horror film for Sam Hill, and it has easily become one of my favorite film from his. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this, these two should switch around. Oh, no, 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 that's the Sam. Sorry, that's the Baroque House. So, so these are Club Disco. So this is basically Sam Hill's experimental fetish things. Um, fluid fields I've covered. Sadistic pleasure I will cover. Say, oh, fuck. <laughs> Satanic works of Jasmine I've covered. Okay, this one's okay. Again, Silas's artwork, uh, Piggy Palace. Uh, it's uh, I've covered. I've covered all of these. I'm scared. The covers are beautiful, but so fucking violent. Oh yeah, this uh, this is the blood blood corrodes inside trilogy, and it has art by Silas Massoff and Power of Zephyr. So it's um. Spit, Red Tragedy, and Sea of Blood. I will also cover all of these three. Uh, then moving on to, you know, some indie stuff. Uh, Bag Boy, Lover Boy, Rules. Not enough people talk about this one. It's a great throwback to 70s New York sh shady CD uh, films. It's good. Samurai Avenger, The Blind Wolf. It's a decent one. Not what I was expecting. I was expecting an actual old movie. But this is again one of these uh, throwback to uh, 70s Grindhouse after, of course, Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez made Grindhouse. Song of Solomon, uh, the uh, American guinea pig one. A really good movie. The effects are incredible. Very intense, very atmospheric. The acting is such shit that it really takes you out of the movie, which is sad because this could have been an amazing like it's it's still an amazing film but it could have been that much more better but the acting is terrible necrophile passion i haven't seen this one yet i'll probably cover it on my channel then we are moving on to more classic films so these are pretty much pre-1969 films and of course we have the fly starring the wonderful uh, Vincent Price, and I love these movies. Um, I watch these with my father, because uh, he can't really watch anything horror-related that's not from the 60s or 50s. Um, yeah, they're, they're fun movies. They're fun movies. Of course, I have the emotional thing. Uh, the Uninvited. This is the Criterion DVD, but I got this at my old, uh, like I said, the old... Um, um, video store that I bought a lot of these. I haven't seen this one yet. Monsters Crash the Pajama Party, which is probably uh, one of the best party DVD you can throw on. It's a lot of short films. It's a lot of uh, old trailers. Uh, it's just a lot of weird stuff. It's more of a comp compilation than an actual movie, but there is a movie in there somewhere. <laughs> 
The Blob, of course The Blob, of course I had to have The Blob with Steve McQueen. It's one of the first movies uh, from that era that I've watched and it's, it's really fun. Attack of the Puppet People is such a, it's a lovely, fun-ass movie, B-movie from the 50s. Of course, it has a lot of the things with 50s movies, but it's so much fun. Plus, the effects are, are really creative, and they look good for the time. Honestly, I was very much surprised for, for the time. Village of the Damned and Children of the Damned, which I think were remade in the 80s by... Uh, famous director, I forgot. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen those yet. Got them for cheap. Psycho. Psycho Rules. The Birds. I haven't seen The Birds yet. Now this is that shitty, like, little um, plastic cover. The Haunting. Another one of those classy, classic horror movies. But it's a ghost film. Nothing really new. Tales of Terror, uh, these are Roger Corman, again, I don't know why they're not with the other Roger Corman films, I guess they're they're too fancy, but Tales of Terror by Edgar Allan, um, based on Edgar Allan Poe, it's part of these um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe films that Roger Corman basically, basically made him famous. Uh, the X, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes with Ray Milan, it's a really fun movie. Of course, like these these movies, I'm going to go through them quite fast because, you know, everybody knows them. King Kong, it's a good movie, of course. Uh, Frankenstein. Phantom of the Opera, the 1930s uh, one that has dialogue. 1940s one with dialogue. Uh, how does it rate on the Phantom of the Opera scale? This is a 5 out of 5 on the Phantom of the Opera scale. Uh, I love this one. It is one of the better adaptations. It's fucking great. I love it. I haven't seen this film yet. I've had this in my collection for so goddamn long. It's by it released by Kino. It's from 1966. It has Raquel Welsh in a revealing outfit. I don't know why I haven't seen it yet. Of course, Night of the Living Dead. This is the shitty Mill Creek version. I don't have the Criterion. It's too fucking expensive. It's Night of the Living Dead. You can get it fairly easily. It's public domain. Um, I like it. I like it. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It gets a recommendation, of course. And my phone's at 20%. Holy shit. My phone's overheating. It's dying. This is chaos. Dawn of the Dead. What can I say about Dawn of the Dead that hasn't been said? This also inspired a lot of Bruno Mattei films. Uh, basically, all of his zombie films are ripoffs of this. Uh, yeah, it's great. Now, we're, obviously, we're in the 70s stuff now. What's the Matter with Ellen, which was also on that um, Shout Factory 4-pack. And Whoever slaw, Slew Auntie Rue. I haven't seen these ones yet. Uh, the Dunwich Horror, which I think is getting a Blu-ray from Arrow Video, and it's about time, because this is one of the best 70s horror film. Like, it's truly an incredible. It's this movie, of course, it's the 70s. It's about witchery. Uh, it's fun. I love this one. I should rewatch it. I should Tonight, I'm going to rewatch a lot of these. Uh, the Exorcist. Fuck off. Um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Of course, this is one of my favorite horror films of all time. This is the Blu-ray, which you have to get. I also have the VHS, which I know a lot of people are like, I actually prefer it on VHS, because the shittier it looks, the better you know it makes it. No, it's not true. Watch the watch this one. Yes, I agree that it still has the grit, you know, it still has the film scratches, the grain, um, which is important for the ambiance of this film, but this is the best transfer of it, bar none. Oh, more Phantom, Phantom of the Paradise. This is also a 5 out of 5 on the Phantom of the Opera uh, scale. Because this is a fun rock opera. Uh, very 70s, very beautifully shot. I love the colors. I love the wide angles used. Like It's an incredible piece of cinema. I love the music. It slaps. Alice Sweet Alice in the Slasher Classic Collection for some reason, even though this is... Oh, I 
I, oh, my legs. This is more of a proto slasher than anything else. Whatever. Tourist Trap, another proto slasher that's incredible. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I haven't seen it yet. Now we're getting into the um, still. Um, we're starting the 80s part, but we're starting with the slasher. So these are American straight up slashers. So we have. The Gourmet Zombie Chef from Hell. I tried watching this once. I just wasn't in the mood for this kind of shit. Again, these are bootlegs. We have the Night Ripper. I haven't seen it yet. I bought this recently. Then we have Dead Girls, which I think I saw got a Blu-ray. Like, right as I bought this bootleg. Which I'm fine with. I'll see if I even like it. Then I might consider the Blu-ray. Uh, Intruder course the unrated director's cut it's uh, it stars Bruce Campbell it's uh, directed by Scott Spiegel it's uh, it's a fun one not my favorite slasher of all time but very surprising we have Nightmare the 35th anniversary edition this is the infamous um, this is the infamous horrible um, description in the back from uh, Bill from Code Red, basically telling the fans of this movie to fuck off and stop complaining. Yes, this is a legendary release for a, what is honestly a very, 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 very good slasher. On the slasher scale, this is great. Uh, True for Dare, I recently watched this. I got this at Christmas. It's a fun... It's more than a slasher, but it's known as a slasher. It's from Tim Ritter. It's insane, and it's great, and it's fun. Uh, the House of Sorority Row. A very good, very good slasher. Like, most of these are fairly standard slashers, let's be honest. You know the drill. Uh, but I was surprised by this one. It's very good. A Nightmare on Elm Street, come on. The Mutilator 2, which, uh, The Mutilator, which I just heard this trailer for the second one, just dropped. And I heard it was a meta movie about the original, which are always amazing. And it's directed by Buddy Cooper. This is one of my favorite slashers of all time. It is so much fun, so charming, it's so cheesy. I love it. I Sorry, I have to put it back. I just love this one. By sword, by pick, by axe, by by. Come on, with that tagline. Death Screams. I like Death Screams. It's a fun regional slasher made by people that are obviously friends and had a lot of fun making this film. Microwave Massacre. Meh, it's okay. Blood Rage is a goddamn classic. Probably one of the better um, Turkey Day uh, Thanksgiving slashers. The Prey I watched in 2020, I didn't pay attention, again. The Chill Factor, I haven't seen yet. Bloody Birthday, I was so glad to finally pick up. I've been wanting this ever since I watched it on Netflix of all places, back in the day. And it's a great one. Now we have the 88 Films Slasher Classic, Mother's Day. I wouldn't really call this one a slasher, but it's great. Uh, trauma. Splatter University. Pretty, pretty, pretty okay one. And then Nailgun Massacre, which is awful. This is an awful piece of shit movie. But it's fun, so it counterbalances it. The Prowler, which gets a lot of hate, but it's honestly just a fairly standard slasher with pretty cool kills, because they were made by Tom Savini. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like it. Maniac, signed by... Signed in black on a black case by uh, by uh, Will Letzig by Bill, the man itself, the man himself behind Blue Underground, uh, uh, maniac. It's one of my favorites, like of all time. Like I think it's pretty obvious. I don't need to say more. Maniac Cop with Bruce Campbell and Tom Atkins. Sign me up. I love this film. Uh, when the stranger calls and happy birthday to me, uh, I haven't, I've seen one of them. Child's Play, of course. Uh, the Majorettes by, directed by Bill Einsman and written by the man who wrote 
Night of the Living Dead. This movie is awful. I didn't like it. I haven't seen it in a while, though. I should rewatch it. But when I watched it, I thought it, it kind of sucked. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night. Again, these are all movies that I don't really need to talk about. Come on, you guys know. Uh, this one is... This one, this one's it's in Spanish. This one, nightmare. Okay, bake, uh, butcher baker, nightmare maker. Obviously, a um, a video nasties. And uh, holy shit, this movie is bleak. It is unapologetic. It is very not politically correct in today's standard, which is fine because it isn't supposed to be, and it's pretty good. The lady that plays Susan Tyrell. She does such a great job at being an insane old woman. It's great. Uh, Tanz der Fuel 2, which is the German edition in this very nice um, uh, Book of the Dead um, release of Evil Dead 2. And yes, like I said earlier, it is signed by Tom Sullivan. Uh, he signed the documentary and he was selling this one. Dead and Buried. Um is another that's very underrated this image is kind of iconic but the rest of the film is very underrated uh it's a, an amazing film it's directed by gary h sherman and uh yeah need people need to talk about this one this is the pretty cool blue underground limited edition dvd it's slightly damaged on top but i didn't pay much for it so I'm, i don't mind this is my original dvd of evil dead 2 that i bought in vegas when i was like 11 um, yep. Yeah. The Fog. John Carpenter. Lovely film. I love The Fog. Christine, I haven't seen yet. S Silent Rage with Chuck Norris. Yeah, it's kind of like a Chuck Norris horror slasher or so of some kind from what I heard. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Monkey Shines. Yep. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> House is pretty fun, however, I feel like it's your pretty standard, nothing interesting 80s film. Cocaine Wars, uh, yeah, I, did I mention I don't really care about 80s action films, but it is presented by a lady dressed as a mime. What was wrong with Code Red? Bill, you're on drugs. Um... You were. You're dead now. Um, the Phantom of the Opera with Robert England. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet, so I can't rate it on the Phantom of the Opera scale. But I am curious because it has fucking Robert England playing the Phantom. Like, that seems to me like great casting. The Jigsaw Murders. This is with Yafet Kodo and Chad Everett. I don't know what this is. Did I watch it? If I did, I forgot all about it. The Funhouse Phantasm 2 and The Serpent and the Rainbow. So, my DVD, uh, my Blu-ray of Phantasm wasn't the first time I had Phantasm. I just never paid attention to this. Uh, the Serpent and the Rainbow is pretty good. And I think I've seen The Funhouse. I'm not sure. Now, this needs a, an actual release. This is stuck in uh, VHS obscurity. It's this 80s kind of uh, Lord of the Flies. Kids get stuck on an island. And it's amazing. This is one of the... This is an incredible film from the 80s. Uh, one of the... Uh, yeah, it's basically Lord of the Flies. Uh, it's fucking, it has Chuck Connors in it. It's great. I love this one. Chud. Chud is okay. Street Trash is some of the most fun shit ever. I love this one. Oh, now we're getting into some Full Moon. Of course, Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Rama. It's an amazing film. It has everything you need for a growing boy. It has tits, asses, nudity, and an imp that sounds like a pimp. It's great. Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity, this has been a joke between one of my friends who's like in his 40s and used to see this, uh, and he used, he rented this 
on tape back in the day, but the VHS version, and he apparently he laughed his ass off with a friend, and he's been wanting to see it ever since, and I found this at Horrorama, and I texted him, and I'm like, we're gonna have ourselves a movie night whenever I go back to where he lives, which is four hours away from here. Uh, Bill Maher, Shannon Tweed, and Adrian Barbo in Cannibal Women in the... Avocado Jungle of Death. So basically this is a 9... This is a... Am I in my 90s phase? No, I'm not there yet. Yeah, this is a... a um, yep, yeah, this is a cannibal film from the States with these ladies in it and Bill Maher. The Entity. I haven't seen it yet. The Hitchhiker. I was after this movie for so long. Uh, wait, this is the show. Sorry, I always get... I always get confused. This is the one I've been I've been wanting for so long, and yet I haven't seen it yet. Uh, we have, of course, the Hellraiser 1, 2, 3, probably the only ones that are worth watching. Frank Ennenlauter's Brain Damage, one of my favorite Ennenlauter film. I love this one. Wait, did I skip over? Where did I put my goddamn collection of uh, basket case? Oh, it's later on. Sorry, people. Did I get mixed up my 90s and my 80s stuff? Because I'm pretty sure brain damage from the 90s. Anyways, Walking the Edge uh, from F uh, FC. Um, this is a Vinegar Syndrome partner label. This movie rules. It was such a pleasant surprise whenever I watched this for the first time. It's with uh, Robert Forster and uh, yeah, it kicks ass. Phantasm, which I've learned that there was some mistakes in the discs and you needed to send your receipt to Wells Fargo, yet I don't have my receipt, so I'm screwed. Uh, the First Evil Dead, of course, a classic. These are all movies, like, it, they're 80s classic, everybody knows them. Do I really need, like, do I really need to tell you that I love Blue Velvet by David Lynch? I don't think I do. Dress to Kill, do I really need to tell you that I like Dress to Kill from... Fucking Brian De Palma, I don't think I do. Do I really need to tell you that The Thing is one of the most amazing horror film ever made? No, I don't. Do I really need to, co to confirm that Bride of the Reanimator is amazing? Actually, I haven't seen Bride yet. Do I really need to tell you that An American Werewolf in London is great? No. Blowout. It's great. Life Force. I haven't seen it yet. Deadbeat at Dawn is one of the best indie film from the 80s. The Blob, of course you know it's great. Basket Case, one, two, three. Okay, maybe one is great, the two is fun, and three is kind of shit. Do you need to confirm that I love Return of the Living Dead? <laughs> Do you need to know that Reanimator kicks ass? Deadly Prey, it's not so fun, it's good. It's just, it's not so bad, it's good. It's just bad. Blood Diner, though, I love that I can talk about. Blood Diner is basically a remake of Blood Feast done in the 80s. It is extra cheesy and extra gory. Highly recommended. Crawl. I haven't seen this one yet. Omega Syndrome. I haven't seen this one yet. Night Kill. I haven't seen this one yet. And Rudger Hour Wanted Dead or Alive. I watched in 2020 when I was depressed. These Kino came like in a cell and I just have an ad. Really the time to watch them, plus their action flicks, so you know my thoughts on 80s and 90s action. So I think this part of the video will go fairly quickly. First of all, my phone is almost dead and I really want to get this over with today. And second of all, we're getting into 90s and modern stuff and I really don't have anything to say about it. Most of this stuff is fairly common, fairly non special i don't know the only like dr giggles is pretty rare which uh, i'm happy that i got because uh, i've been wanting this for quite a while i think ever since i've heard about it however i haven't seen it yet <laughs> carnosaurus is um carnosaur sorry it's a uh, it's a ripoff of jurassic park it is uh, produced by Roger Corman, and I've just wanted to see this for a while. Also, again, I haven't seen it. Um, Needful Things was quite the surprise. Uh, I watched this on a Sunday afternoon, and it's the perfect film for a Sunday afternoon. I really did enjoy it. Uh, it's based on a Stephen King novel, and it's, uh, it's fairly good. It's fairly okay. I didn't mind it. Uh, Faust... 
uh, Faust, they talked about it on RLM. It's directed by the guy that made Society. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's insane. Uh, it's, it has Jeffrey Combs, and, uh, yeah, this one's a, is actually a, it's a pretty good one, pretty fun one. I should rewatch it. Wolfen, Body Snatchers, Bad Moon, Coma. I've had this DVD for so long. I got this for like $2. I haven't seen any of these movies yet. Uh, it's It has two werewolves movies. Two werewolf movie, which is uh, interesting. Uh, some 90s Full Moon stuff. It's Seed People. Seed People is actually pretty fun. Um, I think Agar FM talked about it. Uh, sadly for you guys, that was in French. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a decent one. Idol Lands. I haven't seen it yet. I don't like the cover. I don't like this type of 90s horror. I don't know if it's good. However, what I do like is Exorcist 3, which in my opinion, hot take coming, is better than the original Exorcist. Scanner Cop. This DVD is such a sh piece of shit like 4-3 terrible DVD I think this got a 4k from Vinegar Syndrome it's a really fun movie it's uh um it's scanner but with cops I don't know I really liked it plus I watched the French dub <clears throat> which was hilarious now if Cemetery Man wasn't a thing this would be my favorite horror film from 1996 the year I was born uh, but I'm more, I'm more, much more nostalgic about this one because I grew up being a big Tarantino fan, and him playing in a horror movie directed by Robert Rodriguez it was pretty cool. Uh, I got this DVD pretty much only for Full Tilt Boogie. Uh, it's just, it's a four pack. I haven't seen the sequels yet to Dusk, uh, from Dust Till Dawn. I don't think I need to. Uh, Discord made me buy these. Um, they talked about how fun the Children of the Corn sequels were. And I was like, yeah, you guys sound convincing. And then I found this were like fairly cheap. Bats. Yep. Uh, Nightbreed. Again, I don't need to talk about this one. Uh, Samurai Cop, one of the better So Bad It's Good movie. It actually has a heart. And R RLM did interview the, the actor. People under the stairs. Come on, guys. You know, you know, it's uh, it's actually one of the probably my favorite '90s flick from Wes Craven. I know I I, I talked shit about his '90s stuff earlier, but this is actually probably the 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 only good one he made. Castle Freak, signed by Jeffrey Combs. Of course, Castle Freak is again one of my favorite uh, films from the '90s. Uh, it's from 95 and it's one of, uh, it's based again on, um, Lovecraft. It's, uh, it's, it's so good. It has Barbara Crampton, Jeffrey Combs. It's pretty, pretty good. And of course, Frank and Lauder's Frankenhooker, which is a fun ass time. Exploding hookers is always fun. Army of Darkness. Now we're getting into trauma stuff, which I had to put somewhere. So it separates the 90s stuff from the modern stuff. Uh, Toxic Avenger, signed by Lloyd Kaufman. Again, I won't go into too much details, you guys know. I don't have two or three, but I do have four, because four kicks ass. It's probably... Uh, I like it better than the original. It's so, it's so unapologetic. It's so extreme. It's so funny. It's great. Troma's War is probably their epic. Uh, this is a pretty good action film. Honestly, for... 80s action films from America, this is probably, I'd say, a hot take, the best one. My favorite one, at least. Tromeo and Juliet. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman is a big fan of Shakespeare literature, and uh, it's pretty obvious in this one. And I think this one was written by James Gunn. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, it's, it's, in, it's again... Uh, if you're a trauma fan, I don't have to say much. This one I never really loved, uh, which is weird because trauma fans seems to agree that uh, this is probably one of the best, but I never really fell in love with it. I've watched it multiple times, and I don't know. I just thought it was uh, it was okay, nothing more, nothing less. 
Combat Shock is uh, one of the grittiest, most in-your-face film of the 80s. It's amazing. I wish I had gotten that Blu-ray. But at last, at least I have the DVD, which is also pretty cool. It's the two-disc uncut 25th anniversary. Uh, it's, it's good. It's fun. Redneck Zombies, of course, is an amazing piece of trash cinema and yes the disc is loose i need to get a new case for this um yeah i think it's known to be the first like um widely distributed shot on video film and it's my first experience with a shot on video film astron 6 uh, short films Father's Day has to be probably my favorite of the astron 6 films uh i need to get that blu-ray with that documentary that's brutally honest which is what i love about trauma they're like yeah if you want to call us assholes and terrible to work with go ahead now the uh, jesse p andrews collection period piece trailer town uh touch me in the morning i'll go quickly through these because i haven't gotten any new trauma film since that last video basically uh, Blood Junkie, fairly decent, decent. Doomsday County, nothing good, nothing great. These Asia from Asia with Lust, I guess I got this one this year. Uh, they're all the same movie. Psycho Sleepover is pure hot garbage. Go to Hell, I haven't seen. These are fun. Mr. Bricks, I haven't seen. Blood Sucking Freaks is 70s trash at its finest. Uh, Toxic Avenger, of course. Return to New York at My Volume 1 is... Uh, it's good. Uh, volume 2 sucks. Poultry Geist is awesome. Uh, the last horror film, AK Fanatic, isn't great. Alright, we're getting into modern stuff. So this is anything post-2000s, I think. Tremors. Bubbo Tap. Behind the Mask got a Blu-ray from Scream Factory. It's a pretty fun movie. It's better than Scream, but it has the same, well, it has a similar premise. Planet Terror, the movie that kickstarted this entire addiction to horror films. I love this one. It Follows is a masterpiece. Victor Crowley is decent. Hatchet 2 is pretty good. Hatchet 3 is okay. Wrong Turn, my favorite one has to be the second one where they're in a like Survivor-esque TV show. I love this one. Uh, the Manson Family Murder by Jim Van Beber. Uh, this uh, is quite not rare. This is the Australian release, so it's a bit you know less rare than the American release. I haven't seen this yet. I know I should because this is like a classic. These are a classic in the underground uh circle stay alive uh the unrated director's cut uh good bad flicks made a good video selling this movie and honestly it's pretty good plus it has sophia bush in it so that's always a plus sideshow is actually pretty good a pretty good um film from uh 2000s full moon again nothing spectacular dead girl i haven't seen yet Blood Symbol, I'm pretty sure it's from the 90s, so I got it in the wrong place. Ty West Cabin Fever 2, the film that introduced me to Ty West and that I love so much more than the original. Beyond the Black Rainbow. My Bloody Valentine, which is a pretty competent, decent little remake. Chillerama, kicks ass. Not really, maybe not with the time. When I first saw this, I really liked it because I was just getting into Grindhouse and I didn't know what real exploitation or ground, Grindhouse films were. So uh, I don't think it aged very well. Machete kicks ass. Black Dynamite kicks ass. I haven't seen this one yet. Antichrist. Stake Land 2 is pretty good, but I really want the first one. I just rewatched this recently with a friend, and this is some of the funnest shit you'll ever seen. I haven't seen this one yet. I think this one's f from New Zealand, so I should maybe throw it up with uh, the other film from New Zealand, or maybe take that one down with the rest of the modern horror. 
Uh, Killer Joe. Killer Joe is probably my favorite movie from 2012, I think it came out in... 2012, yep. Yeah. It's NC-17, it was shown in theater that theaters that way. Uh, it stars Juno Temple, Matthew McConaughey. It's a an incredibly sleazy uh, movie about a trash-ass trailer town family. It's great. Murder Said Pieces, this is the R-rated cut. Look, I got it for like $5 on sale. Um, and I heard it wasn't that great, so whatever. Beyond the Dunwich Horror and Pretty Dead, Dead Things, I haven't seen any of those yet. House of the Devil from Ty West, I love this one. Lights Out, I haven't seen it yet. Conjuring, I like these Conjuring films, like honestly I do. Uh, I know they're not super popular in the like extreme horror crowd or some people call them Christian propaganda. Uh, get that stick out of your ass, there's fun fucking ghost movies. Oh, I got this one in the wrong way. Town That's Th That Dreaded St Sundown is a, a good remake. Not as good as the original, but at least it does something different with it. And uh, yeah, I really like this one. Don't Breathe was honestly a very big surprise. I saw this in the theater and I really liked it. The Endless is uh, an amazing indie film. It should be in my indie collection. Um, man, it's from uh, uh, Benson and Moorhead. These guys are great. They're great indie filmmakers. Uh, you should keep out an eye on them. This is a great cult film, like a film about a cult. It's mixed between sci-fi and horror. It's pretty good. Saint Mode. I really like Saint Mode. It has an IGM quote for some reason. This was really fun. Plus, it's really short. Uh, Nicolas Cage and Pig. Yeah, I haven't seen this one yet. Favorite movie of 2022? I haven't even opened it because I saw it like twice in the theater and I need to see it again because I love this one. Uh, Family Portraits. Uh, this is a bunch of three short films from Douglas Buck, the world's happiest filmmaker. Uh, Satan's Little Helper. I haven't seen this one yet. We Are Still Here. An amazing, amazing little indie flick uh, with Barbara Crampton, Larry Fessenden. This one, this one's amazing. Pearl, told him, uh, talked about it plenty. The Saw Collection, I like the Saw movies. Of course, there are some that are complete garbage. But overall, I like the first one. I don't like the editing style, like at all. Like most people with eyes. Uh, the Neon Demon is an amazing film. I really love it. I saw it in the theater in college. It stayed with me for a long time. Uh, it's a good movie. John Dies at the End from the guy that made Phantasm and Bubba Otep. Uh, this one's pretty good. It's pretty fun. Stoker is a sexual crime thriller and a drama. And it's amazing. And it's from Parn It's from, from Park Chan-wook, of course, who made Old Boy and The Handmaiden. I hated the first Stranger. The, the Strangers, like the first one, sucks ass. Don't know why it has such a cult following. But this one, is, is it's better. It's still, you know, nothing special, but I got it for cheap. Yes, I do like a Rob Zombie movie. I think The Devil's Reject is a masterpiece, and that's exactly what pisses me off about Rob Zombie. Because he can make masterpieces. He just decides to make pure shit. Hereditary, I haven't seen it yet. Last Night and So was, I think, my favorite film from 2021. I really love this one. Uh, it's uh, colorful, it's beautiful, it's kind of like a giallo. Uh, yeah, I like it. Oh, my battery server, saver is like, yo, you want to save your battery? I'm almost done. Um, Freaks of Nature, I haven't seen it yet. Young Promising Women, I haven't seen it yet. Trick or Treat, of course, is a Halloween classic. And Cabin in the Woods is, of course, great. Get Out, classic. Mandy, I love. Death Race 2050, I haven't seen it yet. Grindhouse, this is a pretty cool... This is the pretty cool... So, uh, this is a pretty cool release. It has both the movies in their theater, theatrical cut. And it has the fake trailers. Which is probably the only way to see the fake trailers. If you buy those two individually, yes, you will see the extended cuts. 
That's why I recommend you do so, but you also miss out on the fake trailers, which were some of the funnest shit ever. Book of Blood and Midnight Meat Train, I haven't seen any of these. Saw this in the theater, thought it was pretty okay, and I just found it for so fucking cheap. Again, this was at the closing um, video store, so I got it like 60-70% off. The Innkeepers is probably Ty West's masterpiece. Uh, it's debatable now that X and Pearl is a thing, but prior to that, that was uh, Ty West's masterpiece. The Conjuring 2, it's fun. Annabelle 2, uh, I didn't like the first one, but the director of this, uh, uh, David F. Sandberg, is pretty cool. Now he's doing superhero movies, because that's what they fucking all do now. Hostel, probably my favorite films from Eli Roth, which is not saying so much. Cabin Fever, this movie's pure dog shit, but it's fun. I did rewatch it, give it a second watch, and it's fun. Uh, now we're getting into trailer compilations and documentaries. So we have 40 Second Street Forever. 40 Second Street Forever Volume 2, which I need to get more of these. Then we have these Something Strange videos. Uh, they're compilations of uh, uh, intermissions. I bought these because I have a project come that I'm going to try to finish this year, which is a trailer compilation. And yes, that Just Franco video is part of the projects I wanted to finish this year. Grindhouse, uh, yeah, this one's okay. It has a lot of things that were already in the synapses, 42nd Street Forever. Now we're getting into some docs, Penny Pinchers. It's a pretty good documentary. Again, it's a very amateur documentary. Kind of looks and sounds like shit, but the content is very interesting. Uh, not quite Hollywood. This is an amazing documentary about uh, um, exploitation films. Eurocrime is a... Uh, a such such a disappointment uh it's not a great documentary but the information is okay it's just edited and shot like shit vice documentary uh, vice guide to travel when vice was cool i bought this basically because david cho has a documentary in this stanley kubrick life in picture i don't know i found this for like a buck uh, Tartan Video presents Araki Mantari, which is a documentary about Shibari and the art of Shibari. You guys know I like my Shibari, so I thought this would be pretty neat. Pretty cool. Uh, Agfa trailer compilation, uh, one of the better made, and it's more like a mixtape, which I'm pretty excited about seeing the rest of their mixtapes. Uh, mixtapes kind of got like ruined the word itself by shitty MD Pope and shit like that in the disturbing movie Iceberg, but Agfa's um, uh, mixtape do look fun. Kung Fu, Kung Fu Trailers of Fury. This is a compilation of Kung Fu trailers. Uh, Full Chief for Fake, a documentary about my favorite director that I haven't watched yet. Sorry. All the Colors of Giallo. This is a documentary about Giallo, and it's also pretty disappointing um however it does it does have five and a half hours worth uh of uh of trailer of giallo trailers in this so that's pretty cool and of course we have drive-in delirium which is also a pretty good uh, compilation now we're getting into the mainstream like super non-horror stuff so i'll quickly go through this this is the 70s stuff of course the godfather chinatown taxi driver mean street uh the new hollywood movement hardcore is a underrated piece of cinematic uh gold uh written by paul Sh directed by paul schrader who wrote taxi driver uh tiny tiny sam pick and paws rocky you know the the, the typical shit then we go into these char you know Scarface, Bing Doll, Matt, John Malkovich, Shallow Grave, some Criterions in there, uh, Lolita, some uh, Stanley Kubrick. Of course, we have Kids, which is pretty famous in like the, the extreme slash disturbing world, which is it's a great movie, by the way. We have Bad Lieutenant, which kicks ass, which should be in the 90s stuff, whatever. Um, Andy, Sidaris, lots of titties, lots of action. Uh, yeah, Running Scared is actually probably Paul Walker's only good film. And yeah, then we have VHS tapes and Shaw Brothers. And yeah, that's about it. Well, that was exhausting. Uh, I thank you so much. If you've made it this far, first of all, 
you're a real McCoy, you're the real OG, thank you so much for the support this year, it's just been insane, I still can't believe how many of you have just, you know, birthed out of nowhere in my subscription bo box, I am so happy and this video was kind of a, a treat because I, I get comments you know that the people want to see this type of video because people are curious about the collection and I'm really happy at how far this whole thing has gone you know I've started with basically Scream Factory movies and modern films from the dollar store and I've just built to this amazing display of what I love uh, about cinema, you know, I've got everything, you know, from Japanese, Italian, fucking weird, obscure 70s American exploitation. So this is just my love letter to these films, to these wonderful companies who throughout the years have been releasing these amazing forgotten pieces of cinema that without them would have been, you know, gone to time. So uh, thank you again for watching and I see, I'll see you guys later.